You know, I don't think I own any uh, Eclipse related into the AM shirts. They have like some random, they have a lot of uh, space themed stuff. I actually have a space themed one on right now, but I don't think I have anything that's specific to Eclipse's. All right, we need to turn our brain off and play a Red Hulk deck. Collect 200 tokens that I don't need. Oh, I actually didn't log in yesterday. What's that? $25 for me. 700 gold variant. the resubs this morning. Hide, appreciate the almost four years. Fei Hey, thank you for the 16 months. Muffin Man, thank you for the seven. Yeah, I think the four man's in a solid spot at the moment. All right, let me open my Dan Hip Colossus off the collection level track. We'll grab a Red Hulk deck. We'll, uh, we'll battle some cards, huh? Magento Avatar. Medic Butter, six for the half a year. What's going on, Benz? Thank you for the quarter of a year. Is there a feature location? I thought the feature location is done. I thought feature location was done yesterday. Yeah, sure. Feature location is Sunday. Sunday to Monday, I think. Uh, the next one's on Wednesday or Thursday. Don't scare me like that. We might still conquest after we queue into the we queue into the same opponent three times in a row. We're not gonna get to play US Agent inside of Cerebro 2. That would have been nice. This carded Hella is weird. I hate new big six energy cards. They're so boring, chat. I guess this is probably the most interesting thing we could do with it. I'm kind of surprised that there's no hope in this deck though. This list is weird. I guess he's okay with Shuri. What are the individual stats of Red Hulk on Dev? Not that great if I don't I don't recall. I don't think so. Just like right around middle of the road, just a big thing. Yeah. Huge popularity since it's uh, got a bunch of weekend missions in there with the cards playable past though. 2814, thanks for the entire year. Let's get you a sword to go with that shield. Welcome back. Mr. Brad, thanks for the 11 months. Yeah, their uh, their their music person is very talented. Very good at what they do. Yeah, I was excited about the patch too. It's a shame we have to wait.
Uh, yeah, I have a uh, comic book box of gold. It looks good. I actually have it in gold and in. Looks good at both, honestly. Is it greedy for a player to hope for compensation after a patch delay, or is it greedy of the game developer not to consider it? I mean, your comment right there is why, by and large, Second Dinner never publicly commits to when patch days are going to happen. And this, this is one of the exceptions to those moments. Zekels, thank you for the 38 months. I appreciate the over three years. Welcome back. And Ewok Slayer, closed it on four. I appreciate the 47. But comment, comments like that are a thousand percent why less communication is the norm in the industry. You didn't, you didn't ask a question from two different sides. You pointed, you pointed out the expectations among players that they should get free shit whenever anything doesn't remotely happen. So, gamer. Peak, peak gamer. Need a resplit tree at some point. Go for gold on her. Is today, is today some point chat? Under, under promise, over deliver. There's a reason why it's typical. You just like let it happen. Infinity. I don't know that I play enough Shuri to justify spending too many here. We'll take one spin this morning since we're gonna play it to start. We hit the one in ten. Unlucky. Uh, when patches have been delayed in the past, typically they came out on Wednesday or Thursday. That goals. Thank you for the 38 months. Welcome back. Does it make sense to you guys? They took off the whale track. Isn't it free money for them? It's not free money for them at all. And in fact, I wouldn't be surprised if part of the reason why they stopped doing the spending track was because having an easy way to reference how much money you've spent in a month on Marvel staff was possibly costing them money and giving people sobering moments and being like, oh, I should probably not spend that much. Here. I guarantee you, if their economists thought that the whale track was going to make them more money, it would exist. It's like it's like when people comment like, wouldn't they make more bun more money if they released cheaper bundles? It's like, well, they release more expensive bundles because they're confident that more expensive bundles makes them more money. Like they're not they're not making economic decisions because they think it it loses it makes them less money. In my, in my experience, when there's a delay like we have with the patch, usually it means they caught an issue late and fixed it, but then they have to re-wait for App Store approvals after they caught their issue and they re resubmit the version. Kazi, thanks for the 10 months. Welcome back. I think I'm in a mood to emote today. Evergreen statement.
That's what we were just talking about, 2099. That's probably never coming back. I think it disincentivizes spending more than it incentivizes it. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to build my path on the Nexus or off of it. Victory. I have won a game with Red Hulk gamers. One down, one down, three to go. I unlocked the first two whale variants without thinking I spent anywhere close to 200 USC and it made me reevaluate my spending. So real, real talk gamers, if the whale track made you pause at how much you were spending, you should have a more conscious effort on how much you spend in all of your mobile games. And if you're someone that spends primarily on Android, you can set up your Google Play account to have a monthly budget and then it sends you notifications when you're close or getting close or past that budget. It will help you make better decisions. Snap. Luffy, thank you for the over two years. Welcome back. Eclipse was neat. It was just like on TV chat. Oh my gosh, if one kitty is good, two must be better, Chip. Beauteous. Beauteous. Have the don't need two more here. I mean, they're gonna have a Shang-Chi target regardless, so watch for Shang-Chi doesn't really do anything here, yeah? Uh, Joe Mingu, thank you for the seven months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. favorite card chat because she's really good against my least favorite card. Hyped for US Agent. Not really. It's not a particularly exciting card, yeah?
Yeah, double Kitty Hope Angela is definitely a cheat code. I was hyped for US Agent when he was gonna have two power, because I could play him in Cerebro 2, but. He's probably like a. He's probably like a. I think we're gonna start with him inside of uh, Spectrum Shells, is probably where he has the potential to do the most work now, but. Not expecting a lot. Thanos Gaming! I'd probably still be Thanos Gaming too if I had a split like that. Then Shang and John Eliath for the least favorite. Uh, my least favorite between Shang and Eliath is whichever one I most recently played a game against. I guess Hope is just bad in a Red Hulk here, huh? Because I need to Shuri. there is not at all reflective of reality, soul of a ghost. Uh, I'll put soul of a ghost on blast here. They said, people were seeing a lot of Eliath, so they started playing for priority, and then Shang became the better conqueror. Shang has had a 30 to 50% play rate in perpetuity for fucking months. It has nothing to do with people playing for priority or not playing for priority. And when you look up fucking Goliath, most Goliath decks are also Shang-Chi decks. There's no skill in most games of involving Goliath. Goliath involves coin flips on one side, guessing where it's gonna go, and then it involves another coin flip involving whether or not you're saying, no, it's not a factor at all, Soul of a Ghost. You also took the goalpost and fucking moved it because I called you out on, on saying something that's just like decidedly not true. My shock face that you're a gift sub, get out of here. wasn't some elegant or unique or interesting thing that happened. The people play, people play both. Elias' play rate is down a little bit because Thanos was decidedly the best Elias deck. And people haven't decided on that, but Shang-Chi is still in his 30 to 50% play rate, as has been in perpetuity. I opened a viewer next today. I don't think so. I usually don't like doing viewer decks on new card release day. So I can only take a few. I don't know. Maybe, maybe we can take a few after. Let me see how long it takes me to win games with Red Hulk. It's so weird to me how people go on the internet and just make stuff up. Like, lying is interesting to them. They discarded Electra. They played Mr. Sinister. So this is Cerebro 2. What was the patch delayed to? If only there was some type of command that would allow me to communicate when the patch was delayed to. Unfortunate.
Uh, let's say sure, Panda. Ship it. It might take me a minute to get to it, but we'll do it. Draw my deck. The token shop is random with the asterisk that you'll see every card before they repeat, generally. Or not generally guaranteed. anybody says anything this isn't this isn't a thing is it is it a thing i'm gonna go look now now i now i need to go look at the stats historically speaking that's terrible on that deck creator must have put out a video. It's definitely less common then than the other builds. Well, I guess there's nothing with even 100 games here, yeah? There's just no sample size. If I look at 30 days instead of the patch, Snap, have some adverts, gamers. We'll be back in a minute to try and get some more wins. Maybe two more. Red Hulk is just such a boring card. There's nothing remotely interesting to do with it. Mogwai posted streamer two with Eliath today. Got it. Okay, so we should expect it, and it is just a content creator doing it. Nail it. Knight and Jester, thank you for the two months. Welcome back. is better than the original version of Blob, but also I think the current version of Blob is a better card design than the current version of Red Hulk. Because the current version of Blob at least has some deck building considerations to go with it, whereas Red Hulk is literally just like, put big dumb six drop in literally anything. Josh, thank you for the 14 months, welcome back. Boom and Greggy, thank you for the third of a year. I think, I think Red Hulk's one of the least interesting designs they've done in some time. Just like generic big thing. Can go anywhere. Juggernaut for line. Thanks for the over two years. Welcome back. Any news on the patch? Yeah, not today. Two moves. Thank you for the 17 months. Welcome back. Yeah, also poor Giganto, right? He, sh he should be at least 16 power by now, yeah? 
Like, it's, it's offensive that that poor lad is still a 14 power thing. Scopes! Thank you for the 16 bucks. Happy Tuesday. Griffin Bruce! Legendary OG Huglandia Gamer. Thank you for the 92 month resub. Welcome back. Unlucky. for the 17 bucks. Appreciate it. They pulled Hood than Angela, honestly. So. Combination of Galactus, Eliath here. Winning Baxter building would win us the left. Is that true? They're going to gain two here. Up to uh, eight. I would be at seven. No, that's not true. I'll do this. This was the play to play around, Eliath. I guess I should think about the fact that they have the demon a little bit more. I don't know that I had any lines to beat this. I don't know that I had any sequences to beat this line. It's funny that moving hood was good for them. Sir Missalot, thank you for the 32 months. Welcome back. Slayer, appreciate the five years. this one one more try but we might have to change decks this is like the only red hulk deck that looked remotely interesting i just have to turn our brain off and sandman people for a couple Thanks for the 44 months. Welcome back.
Hey, Cody, thanks for the membership on the YouTube side. Appreciate the support. Red Hulk's a great card, very much worth it. I would argue you need to be a very specific type of Marvel stat player for a card like Red Hulk to be worth it to you. And I would also wager if you're someone who's a fan of my deck building and play style that that's less likely to fit you. Not 100%, but I would I would wager on average if you're someone that enjoys the types of deck. He's, he's like the... The exact opposite of the types of gameplay that I typically enjoy personally. It's very, very much a uninteresting dry card. The Cerebro 3 deck got fast from Triskelly, and they sure did. So they're gonna Valk the left and then we can't win, yeah? Is everybody telling me I have Luke Cage? Do you understand that every one of their cards turns into seven power and they have Iron Man in that path? I'm assuming the answer to that is no. You don't understand that. They go, they go, they play no other cards here other than Valk and they go to 42. Thanks for the five months. What's going on, Rue? Appreciate you up on that prime for the 10th month. Their Cerebro 2. No, their Cerebro 3 jet. They played Sentinel and they played Magic. Their Cerebro 3 deck that literally rolled Bast out of Triskelion. Yes, they very well also could have just shanked us because we're playing Marvel Stab. Oh, I need a Red Hulk deck that's less interesting and more powerful. Can you explain Corvus in the last deck? We weren't playing Corvus, it was a randomly generated card. Evil Bart, thank you for the two thirds of the year. Welcome back. Silk Booster still. Have you seen and talked 
about the KFS interview with Glenn and his thoughts on Jake. I have not seen that. Do you have a timestamp? I wouldn't mind taking a couple minutes of React content. I've talked about the Genshin Impact TCG before, but I think it's incredible that they just have like this full esports studio company putting together physical sets for just like this side game mini game inside of their RPG. It's actually just hilarious. Is it, they just have so much money. <laughs> just like more, more money than you could possibly imagine. <laughs> for, con for context chat, Marvel Snap had a really good first year. They made like over a hundred million dollars. Hoyoverse makes like a hundred million dollars per banner. <laughs> it's like it's like 50 to 100 mil per character matter. It's a lot. Friendly neighborhood Spider-Man here. Can you bring up untapped on screen? I have a best text video you can check out my YouTube site if you want my thoughts on the current metagame. But I don't intend to do a data dive today. It's not different than my best text video. They made something like 3.8 billion in revenue in 2022. Yeah. yeah, just like not, not even in the same universe. Oh, bring up untapped on the screens. Got it. Could Galactus be left? No, I'd still be winning there, yeah. Spies. Um. Glenn Jones talk about Shang-Chi. I'm curious what he has to say. Like, here's a link to the video. I'm gonna click on. I feel like we've had a, a run of a couple easy ones, so I wanted to throw a hard one at you. Shang okay. and Jeff are probably the most played cards in the entire game. And anything that gets played this much is, like, gonna get complained about to some degree. I do think it's very... I don't think that's true. I like, are there people that complain about Jeff the Baby Land Shark? Like, I, I actually think Jeff the Baby Land Shark is like a textbook example of a card that's like fine, fine to be popular, right? I, I think once upon a time, there were people complaining about Jeff, but like, oh, he mentions this. Okay, yeah, 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 okay, good, 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 good awesome that nobody complains about jeff that's super yeah. cool that there's like a card that's like this is like easily a top two played card and no one's mad about it at all 
All but right. people are definitely mad about Shang. I almost put this topic as like sandcastle kicking. I, I guess I just wanted to dive into because like I understand the baseline here with like having these cards be ubiquitous. Like what does this let you do that lets you make better cards, right? Let's you because Shang exists, you get to expand design space a little bit. I get that. Is there a concern just on play rate though? Where like this card is played a ton and it's just like, okay. There is so much happening here that even though it allows me to do this stuff, I still want to consider changing it. Concern in the past, like I think I can recall data sets where like Shang was Hold on. played. Your your audio cut off at the beginning. Can oh, you start no. that answer over? I think that issue has existed a little bit in the past. I think there have been meta games where Shang was uh like the number one played card but by like 3x the next card or whatever um like i think i think that that has happened uh but that was quite a long time ago in a much different game like i think that was like maybe pre-zabu maybe like shortly after zabu like somewhere in that timing um so that's not great like that's a level of this card is too popular like arrow was in that boat like not as game overall but like versus other five cost cards she was getting played at like three to four X, the next highest five plus card. Like that's pretty clearly inappropriate. Uh, so like while Shang-Chi might be the most played card right now, it's not by that much of a margin. Like he's played more than Jeff, but not, you know, preposterously more. The next played card is also like fairly popular. Uh, so it, the spectrum is like much more reasonable. So something has to be the most played. We're going to sit and listen to more of Glenn's answer here, but just to, give a thought on that i think your i think having your baseline be how popular is the most popular card compared to the second most popular card is a weird measuring stick to use rufio thank you for the 14 months welcome back and dreaded fisher thank you for the 17 months especially when like jeff the baby land shark is assuredly inoffensive and Shang is is offensive. Yeah, I think I think the the better measuring stick is what sh a couple of people in chat just brought up is what is Shang's popularity and play rate versus the next most played tech card, which uh, based on our public tracker data, Mobius is our next most played tech card, right? And Shang is two xing that one. And I I also think. I would I would potentially go one step further and not just compare it to tech cards in general, but I would compare it to what is Shang's played rate compared to other tech cards that fill a similar role. Am I am I missing any here? These are these are the three tech if you ask me, Jeff, what other tech cards fill a role similar to Shang Chi, in my mind the answer is Shadow King and Valk. May, maybe Cannonball, maybe. Who's actually more popular than Shadow King? 20, 2099, may, maybe? No, en Enchantress definitely isn't the answer. Enchantress is a different class. If we're So if we're generous and say Cannonball is the same class of card as Shang-Chi, which is probably an accurate statement. Holy crap, 2099 is the best performing of these four cards, lol. Um, I, I don't think it's fair to say Eliath is in the same class as Shang-Chi. So, earlier in the interview, Glenn said untapped is off by a minimum of 10% on all metrics. Sure. It's off by 10% on the player base as a whole. However, and I don't know if Glenn gets into this, I would wager the sample that we look at on untapped is more similar to to the slice of the player base that I care about and I want the game balanced for rather than the player base as a whole. Untapped, untapped is almost assuredly a bias towards those more sweaty players, yeah? And also, again, even if these numbers, even if these numbers are wrong, even if these numbers are wrong, it goes back to the comparison of the baseline here is Glenn starts by comparing Shang-Chi to Jeff, and I don't think that's a good comparison. I think you should be comparing Shang-Chi's play rate to the next most played tech card, or more specifically, you should be comparing it to the other tech cards that fill a similar role. 
let's let's continue to listen, shall we? Do I wish Shang-Chi was like slightly less played? Sure. Do I wish he was like, you know, a lot less played? Do I think he's like off by, I don't know, let's say 20, 20%? Like, probably not. Like, that doesn't seem wrong. Like, that that seems like it would have been, it would be totally fine by me. So, yeah, I, I don't think he's uh, absurd, but go ahead. You mentioned 20%. Like, I'd what's say 20% of his current, uh, of his current play. Sure. So, if, if, let's say he is, I was just really, Let's say if there were 100 games, if Shang-Chi was in, uh, I mean, well, you can say 100, like if he reduced to 80, like that's so obviously 20%. Like just gotcha. taking it down by that. Uh, gotcha. So I'm not saying like take 20% off the number, like go from 80 to 60. I'm saying like whatever 20% of 80% of 80 would be. I was actually going to take that a different way. I was like, how, like, because I was going to jump that into how far off from correct do you think a card has to be for it to get onto your radar as a balance change candidate? To me about like what's the actual correct thing and more like what can we do with what's going on in the metagame right now that will make it interesting like if if there comes a time where like weakening shang chi we think will contribute to a really interesting spot in the metagame that maybe emphasizes our season themes uh that's something i think we would explore like this early start to the year you know we had planet hulk season followed by uh black order season both of those seasons were kind of about bigger cards um we've even continued that a little bit with red hulk but that's just because he's red hulk he has to be big uh, but certainly Scar Season, like, we wanted it to feel like, oh, big cards are in vogue now. Like, that's a thing that's happening. And so that's certainly a season where we wouldn't want to necessarily nerf Shang-Chi. You might think, like, oh, you just weaken Shang-Chi and that makes big cards better. But it's like, yes, but it might make them too good. Like, it might make them the only game in town. We want to make sure that they're just a popular game in town, that they're a fun game in town. Uh, and that having Shang-Chi be strong, like, lets that be true in a way that we can more safely push power into them. So... Uh, I do foresee worlds in the future where we temporarily or permanently like adjust Shang Chi in some way. I, that... I I need to I need to play that one back for myself here again. Hold on. Worlds in the future where we temporarily or permanently like adjust Shang Chi in some way. I that doesn't seem implausible to me, uh, but I don't think it's like a Shang Chi is off of whatever his idealized state should be because I don't really think there's. For a card like him and some other cards, like I don't think there's necessarily an idealized state. There's more of like a metagame state in which we want them to be strong or weaker, and how do we coordinate that with what we're doing? Yeah, one thing you mentioned though was the scar season. We're like, we want big cards to be good. Yeah. One, I guess you'd call it a conspiracy theory. I don't actually know. You can confirm or deny. Was that you guys nerfed a lot of the small early scalers to make big cards good? I personally believe that that you guys weren't thinking that far ahead at that point. But I guess I have the chance to ask. Was that an intentional thing? Uh, no, that wasn't an intentional thing. Although I agree that it like correlated in some ways, like it it helped the goal uh, inadvertently, mm -hmm. I should say, or incidentally, I would probably say is more accurate. Um, but what was really going on was we just noticed that like these early scalers were just really dominating what other things you might want to do if you were trying to scale early on. Uh, a, a really basic example I can get, just give actually is Deadpool. Like Deadpool wants to do like an early scaling game plan, right? Like that's basically what the deck's about. And that deck has not changed like, really at all for months and months. Uh, but having like Kitty, Angela, and uh, various versions of Elsa like in the mix, like that deck was just very, very strong. Uh, it could very consistently throw priority, dodge whatever hate it was doing. So it's, it's like, yeah, you could, you know, play your Deadpool deck that has some risks of losing to like randomly getting armored or like your opponent has Killmonger without priority, like all that, all this kind of stuff. Uh, or you could just play like Kitty Angela and you'll never draw the wrong cards because every card in your deck works with each other and you'll always lose priority and never be dead to your opponent's tech cards. And great, like what, what's to be scared of? So it really made it kind of difficult to squeeze in other decks that have more interesting game plans when that deck was so consistently strong and so widely strong. Uh, so we did want to weaken it in that regard. And, uh, you know, now we're going to look at maybe can we return some power to it? It's a new world. Like, other decks have kind of closed the gap and have found more interesting ways to compete both with and without priority, uh, which was really a big thing about the bounce deck was it was just by far really it, it and Sarah, I guess, although Sarah's kind of another whole other thing, uh, just these decks that really consistently are just like, yeah, I will never have priority, but I will be able to beat whatever you are doing a lot of the time. And it's just... His, his comments about Kitty and priority are interesting to me. Because it goes back to something that I've talked about before, where I actually think one of the most 
in one of the most impactful snowball things that happened in Marvel staff design was unintentional. For people that are newer Marvel staff players or maybe don't have a memory going back this far, Kitty Pride's original design did not allow her to help you duck priority. And she only changed to a design that helps you duck priority because it, because her original design broke the game. Not as in too powerful, but as in it was disconnecting people's clients and not letting them actually log in and play Marvel Snap anymore. So it, it, it literally just didn't work. And like their band-aid fix to like have a similar effect result. So the original design was, I don't even remember the stats. Was it a one zero that got plus two? But it, she stayed on the board. She was a one one that got plus two. She stayed on the board and you re, you could return her to your hand whenever you wanted and then replay her the same turn you returned her. So she, she stayed in play and you optionally could pull her back to your hand and then you could also redeploy her on the same turn that you pulled her you pulled her back to your hand. But there was some weird disconnect client bug that was causing people to get fully locked out of the game for like a half hour at a time and they they had to emer they emergency banned her and then redesigned her into this new one that was functionally didn't cause the game to crash anymore. Old, old Kitty was a really neat card. And it was, I I, I think, new, new Kitty caused a lot of these cascading issues that they had. Not a great spot we want to be in. We want to make sure that those decks have to also think, okay, I need priority this game. Like, if there's no games where Sarah or Bounce want priority, that's indicative that there's something we probably want to correct about how those decks play because their gameplay is just not necessarily diverse enough for us. So, jumping off of, like, the topic of Sarah and Destroy, budget decks are something that's, like, uh, really close to my heart. Alright, so... Takeaway from that, Glenn said he sees a future where they could temporarily or permanently adjust Shang. Chazzy Diamond, thank you for the 15 months. I... I really like... That he said that he... Oh, wait, hold on. Quick YouTube lesson, chat. See this fucking button right here? that doesn't cost you anything to engage with, click the button before you're done with the video after you are watching it, okay? Look at that, triple, triple sevens. Click the button. It costs you fucking nothing. Do it. All right, sorry, thoughts. So I, I like that Glenn talked about how they're open to even temporarily adjusting Sheng. Because I'm going to be honest, I'm not, I'm not arrogant enough to say that I guaranteed no that if they make Sheng worse, that the format's not worse. There, there's a real chance that you peel back the Sheng Band-Aid and Sheng has just been holding back this giant wall of awful that will hit the metagame like a truck. And maybe that's the case. Maybe it's the case that Shang is really important and you can't adjust him and it would be terrible for the game if he cost five or only killed one thing or any number of others. There's hundreds and dozens of changes they can make. And maybe, maybe they make the change to him and they make it worse and the game's a worse game. They're like, okay, that clearly didn't work. We're going to put him back. But we don't know is the answer, right? Like, it might be that you change him, and suddenly when you change him, cards like Valk and Shadow King and Cannonball and others that destroy cards, maybe they suddenly have balanced popularity play rates with Shang-Chi, and you have a diverse option of answers. Because I think the one thing that gets really reductionist in the whole conversation is when you talk about wanting an adjustment to this card that has a 30 to 50% play rate. People are like, well, Marvel Snap has to have interaction. It's like saying we should adjust the card that's 6xing the next best interactive card 
isn't saying there shouldn't be interaction. It's saying we should have a diverse range of interaction and you should have real choices to make when you pick it. It shouldn't just be, oh, Shang's the best interactive bit and if you want to play the others, it's going to be really niche or in addition to Shang. It should be, okay, I want to interact with big things. What are my ways to interact with big things? What's the, what's the give or take here? Uh, I would, I would not be surprised if Cannonball's kind of stabilized. I, I would be surprised if this was a, he's a new thing type play, right? I guess I am looking at 30 days. What does latest patch say? Now, even, even at latest patch, he's, he's here. Shadow King slightly better. Shang's popularity goes up to 42%. <laughs> I, I guess Shadow King's play rate is up looking at latest past post Angela too. Oh no, Spider Man 2099 fell off. Rip. Yeah, I don't know. It's just, you know. So I just, uh, I, I'm glad Glenn's open to changing Shang. I disagree with his baseline popularity comparisons. I think comparing Shang to Jeff on play rate or Shang to Red Hulk on play rate or whatever doesn't, just doesn't make a lot of sense. They're not, they're not similar cards. They don't fill similar roles. Like for, for example, I think a good argument that Jeff's probably fine despite being popular is there's other twos that are also popular. Yeah. That are within similar play rates, like Jeff and Angela being comparable. Although these two cards go together, so maybe that's not a good one. It's just, there's more, I feel like there's a lot more nuance in the discussion than just like compare these two numbers and say they're fine, yeah? No, I, I actually think that that's an, an awful take, Blue Fries. A very, and this is why Marvel Snap gamers are not good card designers. Please don't, I really don't care what your suggestion is, most of them are bad. The idea that making Shag symmetrical solves the card is fucking stupid, chat. You look at... I, I, I would bet if you looked at a thousand instances of Shang-Chi being played, the number of times Shang-Chi would have killed something on your side that was also big is going to be like 1 in 10 at absolute most. Probably even less than that. You, generally speaking, are not playing Shang into the lane where you have your own big things. You're winning one lane with your big thing, and then your Shang Monster Island. Yes, that's the that's the case, right? He'd be he'd be symmetrical on Monster Island, but generally speaking, when you think about the play patterns that Shang is executing, you're generally not playing him into paths where he's going to be blowing up your own stuff. I think that's just that's a suggestion that's super lazy that gets thrown out constantly, and I just don't think it's real or looks at what what is actually happening a lot. Hey, happy birthday, Jesse. Hope your day is swell, too. All right, gamers. It was fun being a React streamer for 20 minutes. Let's go ahead and tap some adverts. I need to win one more game with Red Hulk here, I think, and then we're going to move on to another deck. Thanks for hanging out. Don't go anywhere. Yeah, one more. One more game with Red Hulk. Yeah, someone else had asked about, like, is Valk too good at four? The the problem with four energy cards is that four energy cards often don't cost four energy in Marvel Snap. So, like, when you reduce something from a five energy card to a four energy card, you're kind of making it, like, a 3.5 energy card. The, is the complexity of it. And the other the other part is, with Valk especially, is you don't have a second knob to turn on her, right? Because her power is always three. Lucas, thank you for the 14 months, by the way. I missed some resubs while we were, while we were reacting. Dreaded Fisher, appreciate the 17. Good morning, good morning. I, I actually think a really interesting buff 
to uh, Valkyrie would be taking her base power and setting it to one. So that way she could be discounted to a four energy card with Ravona. I think that's a very, very marginal. Make her better in Mr. Negative. Make her better with Ravona in general. And just take that and turn it, turn it a little bit. I think that would be a relatively free. Yeah, because she still, she still has three power. It would just let her be cheaper in some edge cases. So you could build, you could build around her even a little bit further. Yes, Valk sets her own power. I do not have any intentions of playing Thanos on Stream Riddle. You know, Thanos was just the bad guy for way too long. I don't expect we'll play it here for many months. Thank you for the 16 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Victory. You play a Valk deck once you finish the I have one viewer deck submission in the tank giggity, but I'd be happy to do something with Valk as the second one. Look at that. Nailed our Red Hulk mission. Playing the Shuri death, no. We were playing a Shuri deck previously, but it was bad. how this deck does without armor. I feel like you probably want armor. You tell me Shadow King was... Test, test out Shadow King it was armor. Yeah. We'll see. I like an armor playing out proactively is nice. Danny, thank you for the two-thirds of a year. I appreciate that. Welcome back. What card am I most excited for this month? Uh, Red Guardians, probably the card I expect to play the most with. Valentina's pretty good too. Like the last, the last three releases are all fine. The first two releases are kind of shit. Yes, US Agent is whatever, and Red Hulk's whatever. Mirror and Zemo's nice at least. Fine for now. With this here, I would really like a bigger, bigger blade. Hey, thanks for the biddies, Giggity. I'll do some, do some milk after this for sure. Hey, nice Factor Fiction. Congrats on your new gig. All right, imp it up, please. I think Baron Zemo is an incredibly fun and sweet card. Yeah. 
my deck beat the average Wong draw? Probably not, yeah. Magneto could win here. Yeah, maybe. Okay, yeah, this is probably fine, huh? Chaka, thank you for the 15 months. Welcome back. Yeah, I thought we could get him with the boomer sap. I'm probably just afraid of like a, uh, probably just afraid of a uh, enchantress. Peter Vankman, thank you for the entire year. Let's get you a sword to go with that shield. Raid, thank you for the 17 months. Appreciate it. Yeah, Cosmo's not unlikely to be in our output range, but uh, Enchantress is definitely in a Zabu Dex output range. Uh, Tanjo is a serial um, Loki gamer. A fatty boom for a snap next turn. Yeah, that counts, right? Man, if this was armor, we'd be in a solid spot. King practically try to take the kitty. Yeah, maybe. I'm in a world where this wins the game. Kitty on the left, yeah. Oops. Victory. Yeah, the clip was neat. 
the boys, the boys enjoyed it. We went to, uh, I was glad we went to a park to watch it though, because Haley mostly just like did loops on the tall slide there while it was happening. How long did my drive home? We actually didn't have that much traffic on the drive home. We, uh, without, without traffic, it would have been about three hours and with small bits of traffic, it was like three and a half, maybe 345. Went to Carbondale, I was a little bit north of Carbondale. Up in Mount Vernon, Illinois. Opponent snapped. Uh, I'll leave without uh, without Black Knight or Blade. I retreat later by mistake. Apologies. Escaped. It'd be nice if they disable retreat later on the same turn that your opponent steps. Or at the very least, if you retreat later and they snapped, it should just retreat right away. There's no reason to make you wait. Yeah, so apparently it took people like 12 hours to make what's normally a five hour drive during the 2017 eclipse that had totality come through Southern Illinois. So IDOT was really smart this time through and they built into all their construction contracts that all the companies doing construction on the expressways weren't allowed to be doing construction this past weekend. So I'm sure, I'm sure that that foresight helped uh, make the situation less bad than it was seven years ago. Opponent snapped. I'm gonna stay, I just need a fatty and then we're in a good spot. I don't think Baron Zemo is overpowered, but it's deeply fun, unfun not being able to play my own cards. I had a, I had a post talking about that over the weekend. I think the psychology behind people complaining about the mill decks is really interesting and amusing. And it happens not just in Marvel Snap, but basically every game I've ever played, where people have this deeply visceral reaction to having their cards milled. And the, the reality is that unless the mill deck is taking away five plus cards from you, your getting milled is no different than if you simply hadn't drawn the card that they took away from you. Yeah, it happened in Rune Terra, happened in Magic the Gathering, happens here too, where people just like, Having, having your your first three cards milled or z mode is no different than those cards simply of having been stuck on the bottom of your deck. And sure, there was a feature location this past weekend where uh, the feature location made that more likely to be a thing, is, is accurate. Sure, it's four to brick your seventh draw. It's five to brick your, your what's it called draw. This is your general reminder that feature locations fucking suck and that's not exclusive to what enabling mill 
and you're a silly mark if you let yourself play Marvel Snap during feature locations. Turn the game off and go do something else, gamers. They have another Mockingbird. They move Jeff. They play Mockingbird here. We lose. Yeah, I think we're just dead here. Feature, feature locations suck and Carbartage was no exception to this. This could maybe be game winning. Ah, that's close. Got him? Statistically got him. We can get screwed in the middle. Cool. The only feature location that doesn't suck is Fogwell's Jam, exactly. Victory. Good, good, real, and accurate take. Again, and this is this is the psychology of it because this is a this is a bad illogical take. I queued up with my deck to not watch my opponent eat all my cards, but that's just not how I play the game. If your opponent eats three or less cards, it's no different than if three cards were on the bottom of your deck, and you definitely fucking signed up to not draw three cards in every game of Marvel Snap that you play almost. You did very specifically sign up to play a game with a 12 card deck where you only see nine of those cards per game. That is 1000% what you signed up for when you loaded in for a game of Marvel Snap. And acting like it was otherwise is nonsense. The only, the only difference is that you and your opponent just both got to see the three cards you're not drawing or some number of the cards you're not drawing. It's 100% a feels over reels. It feels bad. It feels worse to not know which cards you're drawing. Is the TL, the TLDR. It not knowing which, knowing the cards that you're guaranteed to not have feels worse than having it just be a mystery on the bottom of your deck. It is a thousand percent an ignorance is bliss thing. My hand's pretty good here. I think I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna hope into War Machine, into Infinite, into Magneto. Oh, are we gonna get Shuriken in? I might need shit to Shuriken in, gamers. Oh, is it this now? I think it's this now. I don't understand how only three, they run at least four ways to dab. It can easily hit five. All right, listen. This isn't fucking the Marvel Snap subreddit. You don't just get to use your feelings here in exchange for reality. I get that you feel like it's easy for them to mill five cards, but fuck your feelings. They're not reality. And again, it was easier for them to hit five cards over the weekend when there was a feature location. Stop playing during feature locations. But the reality is them milling five plus cards in a normal game of Marvel Snap is incredibly unlikely, but it's a deeply negative experience that your lizard brain can't pull itself away from. And again, I am perfectly fine and it is perfectly reasonable for you to just be like, Jeff, I don't enjoy watching my cards get destroyed. I'm not I'm not gonna logic you. I'm not gonna logic you out of that. It's not a logical position. It's a purely feels 
and you're entitled to your feelings, chat. What I am pushing back on yes, is the idea that, like, this is a common thing. Because it is not. We can do the math on how common it is, and it's not fucking common. I'm not here to argue with you about the subjective bits of it. I'm here to point out the reality of how likely the thing you're complaining about is to actually happen. And then, then again, I would also go on to talk about, if you want to talk about it from a power level perspective, you losing one to two draws, even in those uncommon games where that happens, the, often most decks can play through that. The thing that actually beats you, despite it feeling bad that you lost some of your draws, is Dr. Octopus taking away the resources you did draw, and then often Shang-Chi chopping down your big shit after the fact. Those are, when push comes to shove, and you look at the cards that actually beat you, it's usually some combination of Doc Ock and Shang-Chi. Yeah, and that's, that's another, another point that I think is really, really worth pointing out slash talking about is people, people talk about, well, Mill bricked one of my draws, and I feel bad that they bricked one of my draws. It's like, oh, okay, so Mill hit the 3%er to brick one of your draws, and you felt bad about it. What about Black Widow that hits the 100%er to brick one of your draws every time? Or you, want, you want to talk about brick draws, Rock Slide and Korg do that way better. Yeah, and, and Black Widow takes up one of your board spaces to do it. I feel like we're dead, Chip. Nerf Black Widow. It's probably just a low collection level player that's gonna fuck us up because the peak fucked us up. draws are also more valuable than late. Yep. Yep. What would a counter spell look like in Marvel Snap? Eliath. Eliath is a counter spell. I can't wait to turn to blame. This is the other upside. To this card being armor instead of Shadow King, is that like you could just play armor on curve, which has value in this deck that has clunky combinations of openers like this. We haven't had a single opportunity to leverage Shadow King efficiently yet. I definitely like, wish it was armor. It's a beer match. It's probably some type of beer. 
our hands absurd now that we got uh, their infant on so the step. Bought the same deck as you to me. A lot of the War Machine decks have been playing Goose. I think it's worse than Arbor on average. Yeah, Arbor. Uh, honestly, I think that that last bit of your thing is un an underrated part of Armor Panda. Arbor. Arbor is such a good variance mitigation tool. commit this in advance. Uh, so if they play Infinite here, they just don't have enough resources there. Just real big. Yeah. Yeah, I think my takeaway uh, Panda is I would rather have uh, I'd rather have Armor in that slot. All right, gamers, I'm going to run to the bathroom. We're going to play a couple more with this when I get back. Enjoy some adverts in the meantime. See you in 120 seconds. Don't go anywhere. Thanks for checking out. Cycle for one more segment here. You can toss armor back if you're gonna play for it. Yeah, that sounds good, Panda. Glenn talked about Pixie, and they're looking to buffer it either a 2 3 or a 1 1. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Pixie's original data mine had her as a 1 3, so I wouldn't be surprised if they moved her down to a 1 cost. Yay, fun. She's a fun, fun sweet card. Yes, we still have a new card release this afternoon. US Agent releases in approximately uh, four hours. When I plan to stream for a couple hours past that as well. AJ Omega, thank you for the five months. Welcome back. the eclipse yeah it was neat the five months to support on the YouTube side by melting. Good morning, good morning. Yeah, we, we had perfect viewing weather here in Central Illinois. Or Southern Illinois, technically, I suppose, I drove down to. 
this was the call Mockingbird player, yeah? We're dead, yeah? Yeah, I did do a lieth. A few things. Thank you for the 12 buds, by the way. Yeah, it would be nice if when you queue into the same person, it was like, hey, this is the, the what, what they were playing last time you, you played into them. <clears throat> Anyways, jokes on, jokes on you. Shoot over here. Oh, they're hella. does not have any notable Hella does not have markedly markedly powerful decks currently Sephiroth thank you for the 11 months and Nudley thanks for hanging out welcome back some black knight blades here there it lies the question hello can you understand me hello hello Jesus take the wheel on this one. They could have our shag, yeah.
Fire Eyes, thank you for the six months. To be fair, Chad, I think hella gamers are way more likely than the average gamer is to be emoting chodes. I think it takes a certain type of mentality to enjoy playing that type of deck a lot on the ladder. Uh, not all hella players, but if hella player, then more likely to be. More likely to be emoting. You try bounce with Iron Man. No, very little desire to play. Play bounce with Iron Man. I think Iron Man in general tends to be bad in bounce. Now, unfortunately, I can't uh, play for Asgard because I need to go Strider Center. You tried Shuri Kitty since the patch. We played Shuri Kitty this morning and it was kind of kind of mediocre. I suppose we do lose the center to Shang. Let's give him multiple Shang targets. say why you think that I think it goes over the top of some decks I don't think I don't think what's it called bounce is a deck that needs help going over the top of people and if you think it is Shang-Chi is a better card for going over the top of people but ultimately I would recommend just playing a different deck mm, I guess this loses to and I, and I know that Lambie has always played that card, and I think he's always been wrong to play that card. Al, thank you for the 32 months. Yeah, we're just dead to Shang, and we're dead to their big thing, so we have to go. All right, that's enough of this deck. Over it. Escaped. Yeah, we need to draw Black Knight so we can kick Silk out of here to have a chance. Hi guys, thank you for the 18 months. Welcome back. I think I was better with the old beast design. I think it was still not good. Those decks. Any closing thoughts on the deck? Jet Ed, thank you for the 13 months. It's fine. It's just not as consistent as the other decks at making big numbers. There's just so many moving parts. I think I prefer having Ebony Maw in the build somewhere, so that way your War Machine draws are better. Oh, snap. Like, not, not having Maw making your War Machine be less potent felt bad. What's this? Wind paid my hand. 
When is the patch coming out? Nobody knows the answer to that question. There's a good chance Second Dinner doesn't even know the answer to that question. Blue Marvel here or Iron Man. Oh, I guess it's only turn four, though. Oh, I got what I was looking for. It was not as useful. Moo! Thank you for the 11 months. Appreciate that. Confirmed Cerebro 2 Gamer. Unlucky. Why is this card so good? It's so good, chat. Plus Squirrel Girl on the last turn is pretty solid though. Squirrel Girl. Squirrel Girl is going to do like a mini Doctor Doom impression here. This puts me to 20 on the left, which does lose to double Cerebro. But if they double Cerebro, I'll win the right question mark. Yeah. Will I? They'd be at 12. They'd be at 5, 6, 7. I only go to 11. Lose the double Cerebro, sad. Right? 5, 6, 7. Victory. They're only about 50% to have the double Cerebro, so I think I take the flip here. Oh yeah, that's true. There was a chance their Cerebro and or Mystique got peaked as well. They only played one peak card that game. They'd already used their uh, Shadow King. Hey, e fellows, if you're on the server 103 for AFK Journey, um, pop in the subs Discord server and I'm letting people know there when we have space. We currently have a full 30 in there though. We have a very active channel or thread in the subs Discord server of uh, folks playing it. AFK, AFK Journey is actually dominated by off stream time lately. We're going to be doing some more sponsored segments for them later this week, Thursday, Friday. And if you're someone, if you're someone that hasn't checked out AFK Journey yet, I'm going to have some free sub gift incentives starting on Thursday for that game. So you should wait to check it out until my promo goes up. I, I think it's a genuinely good game. I've been playing a lot of it. I dropped Star Rail. Yeah, I've been thinking about dropping Star Rail myself. I <laughs> uh, see it is so awkward. Just can't do anything. Many thoughts on Nocturne. I'm really looking forward to Nocturne. I think she's a sweet card. Yeah, so if you're thinking about trying AFK Journey and you want to help me out, wait till Thursday. I'm going to have a new a new promo link for them. And you'll be able to uh, potentially earn a free sub gift to the channel as a thank you if you wait. What it dome. Thanks for hanging out. Appreciate it. Do, do, do. 
This is our like third or fourth time playing this person today. We're playing a different deck this time at least, I suppose. for the six months. Welcome back. I just haven't had time for a duck. I'm still like logging in and doing dailies. It only takes like five to ten minutes a day, but I'm starting to approach like chore territory, not playing the actual game much lately. Just too many things with, with AFK journey on top of it. Done one here since I have Dazzler on two. Average Bear, thanks for the three quarters of a year. Welcome back. How's your eclipse experience? It was fine. And good, good viewing weather. Traffic wasn't too terrible. We took the we took the kids camping Saturday and Sunday nights. So we didn't have to drive that far. You already kill Boggard. Support it. Cheat you. I'll just jump on this island here in the center. Let's press the button. What's Nico? Nico doesn't have a spell when she jumps out of somewhere like X Mansion. She only rotates spells when she's in your in your deck or in your hand. God, if they, if they hella Odin on to Killmonger, I'm gonna be a little tilted. Also, Odin Killmonger, yikes. Atlan, thanks for the 12 buttons. Probably a lower collection level gamer if I had to guess. Top 5,000 though. Victory. No man farmer, thank you for the 17 months. Welcome back. Low 
collection level players that make it to infinite have really inflated stat points because they farmed bots to climb to infinite. Yes. Yeah, it's definitely the worst part of the system. Honestly, that's another part of like, I talk about we often go hide in conquest because I want a wider range of opponents. Like we played against one person like four or five times this morning already. But you also don't have that there. Like the random, the random lower collection level pe beating up people typically is not a thing in conquest, which is also nice to not have to experience. Surfer the best deck now. Nope, almost assuredly not. I don't. I don't think there's a clear best deck at the moment. Let's get take a mulligan. Yes, that's true. Surfer. People, Carbartage might have renewed some people's interest in Surfer generically. That's a good shout out. So I posted on Reddit, they made a new account and got infinite day one, it was rank 15. Well, that's not really relevant. The relevant amount is how many stat points you got, right? Because like getting to infinite on the first day means that you just like, there aren't a lot of people there. So your, your specific number on day one isn't relevant as much as how many stat points you enter with. Romeo, thanks for the brand new, brand new tier one sub. Those direct supports are a big part of what enabled this to be my job. Thanks for keeping me around. Uh, the stats on Loki are not particularly impressive. It's definitely popular though. Everyone start with the same amount of stat points. Yes, but it changes based on uh, how you win and lose. Can you explain how stat points a bit? It feels like no matter how high or low I end up post infinite, I always have the same starting points the next season. It's because you're not playing enough. The amount, the amount you have to play to meaningfully move your MMR is incredibly high. Like I think, I think most people don't realize just how many games people at the top are really playing. Escaped. Like for reference, just to, to give you a, a, a snow, a reference chat. The absolute highest MMR players enter infinite at like I looked up the Reddit post, two day old account, they entered infinite 8,800 set points. That's fucking absurd. People, people with real accounts typically have like 84 to 8,500 snap points when they enter the season. And the top people, actually we can look at the leaderboard. I say the top people usually finish the season over 10,000. Where are people at already? Yeah, there's, there's already people at, 90, 9,300. So like, getting, getting over 10,000 points from, getting over 10,000 stat points from 8,500. Let's, uh, let's assume what? You get like 12 points from a four cube win. So 1,500 divided by 12. It takes you 125 games it takes you 125 four cubers if you never retreat and never lose a snap point. But that's also not realistic, right? So like, even if you assume a 60 something percent win rate, it's still going to take you hundreds of games, yeah? How many snap points reset the other season? It's different for everybody. The higher you are, the more you tend to lose, but also your starting snap points differ based on what your internal MMR score is. And that's harder to move. So actually I had, I had Twittered. I had, I had Twittered. 
about entering at 8,200. And I asked some other people about where they were at. And the ranges, I think there were some that were as low as like 6,700. Yeah, entered, entered at 6,700. 6,700-ish. There were a handful of people that entered higher, higher than I did even. I just went enter net. 8297. I think adding ranked prizes to post infinite would be one of the singularly most disastrous things they could do for the game and they probably understand that and that's why there aren't meaningful prizes for post infinite that's a funny average cube rate for that would rate. Uh, if you won cubes and lost snap points, you almost assuredly encountered a visual bug. You could win a two cuber and lose rank though. Losing rank is different than losing snap points. So, the reason why it would be bad to have meaningful rewards for post-infinite is every time you add grindable rewards to a free-to-play game, your players feel compelled to optimize to earn those rewards or they feel like they can't keep up and will burn out. Having too many sources for rewards is a real concern because it pushes people into doing other things with their time if they can't get everything. Players love to optimize the fun out of their games. Yes, exactly. Basting? I can't sign up by Basting. I think I am. Yes, that is exactly why there aren't more rewards for playing Conquest. Because if you put too many rewards behind Conquest, people who don't feel like or don't have time to get those rewards will feel pushed out of the game. 100, 110%, that is the case. Everything said, a majority of players don't reach infinite, so they'd also be locking those, locking out those players. Yes, correct. There's a, there's a reason why the biggest tangible currency amount is at 90. do here honestly might just be Velk the right and try and blank their shang
I'm about to get killmongered? Thank you for the half a year. Welcome back. So as you tried Pixie Patriot. Yeah, we just looked at the stats on that and they're really terrible. Some kind of weird bluff. Dress 7,000, yeah. Three and a half hours till our new card release, gamers. Three and a half. Hopefully we get an update on a... What's it called later today? Edge state. And the... Obviously not guaranteed. But in the past... We have had uh, delayed patches go up on Wednesday or Thursday. Not a fantastic project, Pegasus, for us. Much better for them. Uh, they actually buffed U.S. Agent, so it no longer works with Cerebro 2. Like, if you're not snapping this hand with the opponent's deck, like, what on God's green earth are you snapping? Like, does a, does a hand exist where you push the button? Don't fish, thank you for the entire year. Appreciate that, welcome back. I do not expect to play Cerebro 3 today, no. I think we'll probably start with Spectrum plus uh, the new card. Right to tag the Hulk here, but like I was setting this up as my mouth path. Alright, Iron Man or Blue Marvel, please. That's kind of like what I asked for, yeah? <laughs> just as, just as good. Escaped. All right, gamers, have some adverts. We're gonna change decks when we get back. Thanks for hanging out. Don't go anywhere.
You deserve to be at least rank 10. That's not true at all. I don't, I don't sit here and grind the same sweaty deck for eight hours a day. I'm certainly not gonna play enough ladder to get that. I don't deserve shit. What's going on, Methodress? Thank you for the 21 months. Welcome back. X Hero, thank you for the half a year. Good morning, good morning. Don't fish. Get your sword to go with that shield. Thanks for the 12 months. Stuck in Valk decks. Is there anything loaded up in my deck editor that I haven't played yet that I want? There's still silly Red Hulk feature locations going on, so I don't think I could play any of my She-Hulk decks. two years. Welcome back. It's time to stand up for a little bit, gamers. Been sitting for a while. <sighs> Red Hulk's a big, dumb, playable card. Should probably expect to see a bit of it for a while. Why do we think the patch was delayed? I would assume they found some kind of issue with the patch before it went live and then they had to resubmit their new build through the app stores for approval and are waiting on app store approval. It's usually, usually how it goes. be today hopefully i'd be very surprised if it was today later this later this week would be my expectation This one too. Nah, because I'm gonna go like five five probably.
Oh, I got a little nervous when the hood popped up, chat. Got a little nervous when the hood popped up, not gonna lie. Victory. Yeah, this deck that we're playing is very competitive. This is my best decks roundup. A few different variations of it have had solid, solid stats. I'm gonna gain four more here. Oh, Victory. I was just counting to make sure we could win the game before I push the button. We do this here, we do this here, we get a ball here. not have counted it. Metal Gears, thank you for the 10 months. Welcome back. Gross. Any two drop. Any two drop. Unlucky. Gonna be a mulligan, givers. Professor scam, professor scam, professor scam. 
Do you know Professor Scam? Do 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 do. Unfortunately, they didn't go for the, uh, we were hoping they'd slam the Red Hulk. They could have their own Jeff to get into Clintar as well here, chat. Escaped. We can, oh, we can't even, we can't even tie over here because Vision and Nightcrawler can go left. Even, even if we could tie, we're way behind on the breaker. None of those are remotely winning lines. Thanks for the 10 months Metal Gear. How the games of the day? They've been all right. Gaming. They what? I'm not really into deck building roguelites. Most of, most of the games I play off stream are uh, single player RPG games. play Elden Ring. No, if I want to feel angry at the game that I'm playing, I'll play Marvel Snap. Wind aid my hand. Unfortunate. That's probably their snap, though. They were snapping Mobius into my Ravonna. I think we probably have to give up the flooding. start games like Baldur's Gate because I know I don't have time for them. Probably, probably at some point we'll play that, but it's going to be like, I don't know, 300 video game hours for now, and then it'll be like 60 to 100 all on its own. Depends on where they, they discounted Thanos this turn, so where are they going to play him is a good question. Vision.
least to Eliath is the problem. I need to move this here to play around there, Jeff. Most angles there. Victory. Eliath. Eliath was the only one that was getting us, and with them playing a hella variation, I would imagine Eliath is probably not in their output range. Uh, you can't undo undo end turn with uh, with your opponent having a daredevil out. Not an option. Once you lock, you're locked. So the half a year ago, cats, welcome back. Yeah, we were beating all their individually big cards there, and then we also beat what they did. Good little land shark. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Now, the downside to Sentry Egg here is it encourages them to fill the right, which makes Hobgobliting less appealing next turn. Although I have Daredevil, yeah, so I guess we just have perfect perfects. this, yeah? Just so I fill two spaces. Do I want an extra six power thing? Probably. Thank you. 
The classic Shang-Chi Red Hulk Kai Evolutionary deck. Victory. Freaking video gamers. Truly, truly a Marvel Snap classic. Death Squad, thanks for the two thirds of the year. Welcome back. I'm really surprised they let the middle blow up, but that works out well for us because now my void can kick across here still. Snap. Not like any to the left. We've got Sentry in the middle and we've got Void covering the right. a great follow-up here. Yeah, Debris Renslayer, fine. The rocks are plus one, though. Like a beast or a falcon here? Assemble. their entire fucking career, chat. They're a, they're a new player. Feel bad. Marvel on the right. I'm left. No, I need to be four on the right. I try murdering a rock. Hurried. AFK journey going for me. I am AFK stage like 409 or something like that. Game's fun. If you're someone who hasn't checked out AFK journey yet, I'm gonna, gonna be doing another sponsored bits for them uh, at the end of the week. And if you haven't checked it out, there'll be a sub gift incentive. For a 
jokes that. Check it out for the first time using my Link Slitter. Hello! Annie, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay, Annie? Cannonball is so much worse than Shag here. If I'm st if I I think this is the best line. I was about to say if I'm staying, we have to stay. Opponent snapped. I think there's I think there's a good chance we're dead. the Dracula flip. Yeah, Ravona helping our opponent. Minions to me. Always. Every single fucking time. <sighs> Does Cannonball win there? Um, If they get plus eight to seven, Giganto goes here. Giganto right beats me? No, I guess I would have played Demon. Does Demon here, Cannonball here win? Yeah, maybe. Demon right, Cannonball middle. They would have been minus seven and they would have been at most plus 14. And they would have been minus 11. How many points do they have in the middle? I can't remember. I think I think we would have won it. I think Cannonball, I think Cannonball Demon might have actually taken it, yeah. They had 32 mids. They would have been 21 and we would have been 28. Yeah. Yeah, Demon Cannonball was better. Oh, but Hella could have spawned Giganto middle then. Yeah, that's true. We had priority. Giganto could have just gone mid. Would Black Cat? Black Cat would have also beaten us middle, yeah? So we'd have... In order for that to work, we would have needed both of their things to go left. So probably still dead because of the priority. Thoxor, thank you for the two and a half years. Welcome back.
What's better, Red Hulk or Nico? I mean, Nico's way more interesting. Red Hulk. Red Hulk is literally one of the most boring cards that could exist in Marvel Snap. How's this been doing? It's been fine. This deck has very good stats. This deck has was in my best decks roundup for a reason. I would be very, very surprised if something close to it is not very good. I believe we've died. have to leave. Just have to leave. I think buying Cannonball is fine if you really want to play with Cannonball. However, it's definitely not. This deck isn't, uh, this deck is competitive. It's not a, this is one of the best decks in the format and you have to be playing it. Etc. Etc. Especially with the patch hinted at being spicy coming down the pipeline, I wouldn't make any big token investments until after you see the results of that. It's just good general advice whenever there's a change right around the corner. Wait a wait a day or two and see. things when you're playing this deck is you don't want to play hood on the right ever because you want your sentry void to kick across primarily first you want that prioritized I guess that's good for us overall though Martyr's data mine to be an upcoming conquest reward. That's interesting. I hadn't seen that. Tried the hope mid range deck that's all the range. I assume you mean the one our current opponent is playing. Uh, I am not lucky enough to be able to play. I am not lucky enough to be able to play um, Silk. See what I mean? See what I mean? Well, I guess this locks them up though, so we got that going for us. This is plus three in the middle, so we're good. Jeff left. They already moved their Jeff. Beep, beep, beep. 
Doody, do, doody, do. Zinder, thanks for the 27 months. Shout out to the great Discord. We do have a wonderful Discord community. You're not wrong. still groups of four. No, groups of nine. go to series five after their season you know someone else said that they hadn't seen i had someone else comment on a thing that they hadn't seen hope in their shop yet either so i wonder i wonder if there was some kind of issue with putting her with her rolling over appropriately has any free-to-play players in chat had hope in their shop even even one example to the counter band of xander thanks for the three quarters of a year Welcome back. I'm excited for the conspiracy theories to spawn from that one. Chat, make sure to get your primers in this month. Starting next month, they're cutting prime support in, uh, in a significant number of places. Or sorry, two months, June. It's only April. Currently, all Prime subs are worth $2.50 USD. Starting in June, the most valuable Prime subs will be worth two and a quarter, with a majority of Prime subs being worth significantly less than that. I think. There's different level of prime subs. Starting in June, there will be. So in, in June, prime sub pricing will be changing based on how much you personally pay for the prime in the region where you live. So people who pay more for prime will have a prime sub that is worth more. So they're Jeff Ked move here, because they got that out of out of Baron Zemo. I'm honestly surprised Twitch has been paying out. In a, in a number of non-US countries, Twitch pays out more for Prime subs than they do, than they actually take in. They've been losing money on it, like very directly. And not, not just in the loss leader sort of way.
So their Jeff can move is the thing here. I think I snapped them though, yeah? Snap. Get that big old, big old fatty boomer in there. Victory. Yeah, I think even if they have any, they're in trouble. They probably didn't realize it and someone looked over the books and said, what the fuck, we're paying how much for Turkish Prime subs? Yeah, while it's, while it's not as extreme in all places, uh, some, some Prime subs will be worth as little as like 55 cents. I think Turkey is the extreme low one at nine, nine cents USD. And then again, and again, currently, they are all worth $2.50 USD. And the, the tippy top will be Canada, Puerto Rico, and the United States are going from two fifty dollars down to two and a quarter. So at a minimum, all prime revenue is going to drop 10% for creators. But for a lot of people that have bases outside the U.S., it's going to drop significantly more than that. I will. Well, I personally obviously will take a hit like everybody. I'll be one of the more fortunate people I would wager. A majority of my subs come from the US and Canada. It's like close to 80%. So I'll wager my personal income drop be somewhere in the 10 to 20% range. I imagine other creators from outside the US will see significantly more than that. Keeps annoying. It's not saying 250 anywhere. Canada, Canada will still be the highest tier of it all. When all is said and done. Oh, I'm gonna have to give them my demon. That's sad. Vice versa. Thank you for the primer. Appreciate that support. What percentage of my income is Twitch in the ballpark? A majority of it. Hub Cosmo, lol. Is YouTube catching up? No, YouTube revenue actually dropped off significantly for me. In any in any given month, YouTube's probably somewhere in the ten to twenty percent of my total income, if that. If you haven't seen it, I did a one year in review video for Snap uh, in October of last year. And I broke down uh, my income sources and what they were and how much they were for the first year of doing Snap content. Hey, thanks for the primer, Bill Ram. Appreciate you re-upping. Is that because of the new editor or just a decline in YouTube revenue? No, just a decline in YouTube revenue in general. In fact, it's inside of like November of last year, you, the YouTube algorithm decided it was just gonna like stop recommending my edited channel. And that one, that one fell off pretty significantly. My, uh, my, uh, arrangement slash agreement, whatever you want to call it with my YouTube editor is they make I pay them half of what the edited channel makes that they work on with a minimum of $50 per video. And in February and March, the $50 minimum was, ended up being more than half of what the channel made. Which means that that channel now averages less than $50 a video. 
which is one of the reasons why I've been posting less there. And then that's, that's kind of a vicious feedback loop because like when you post less, it then even recommends you even less, but it's just hard to justify doing more based on the metrics. First time queuing into destroying while playing this. This matchup's probably atrocious. Killmonger is such a killjoy. I hit collection level 60,000 last night. You should definitely resub to this channel if you're collection level 60,000. You should, you should sub to every Marvel Stamp channel you watch if you're collection level 60,000. You watch them for five minutes, you should give them five dollars. You've given Marvel Snap 800 times that. <laughs> yeah, chat, chat, for reference... I'm collection level 44,000. 40, 44,000. To give you, to give you a baseline on what 60K is. I'm gonna debris so that way I can't kick Carnage into the left. And I can cannonball the middle next turn. Second Dinner did say, did say they had a hundred million dollar investor. Turns out it was Hellkid. <laughs> L O L. That is the spookiest fucking Cosmo. Holy. All right, gamers, I'm gonna tap an ad roll. We're gonna, we're gonna switch decks on that note, I think. We have our new card coming here in about two and a half hours. I'll see you in a couple of minutes. Thanks for hanging out. Don't go anywhere. Subs, I'm already grab some lunch. Be or be.
Hey, Odie. Thank you for the two thirds of a year. Welcome back. Sorry for the slightly longer than normal ad break. I had to run upstairs and microwave something, so. I pushed the long button instead of just the medium length button. So I was gonna be AFK anyway. Let's play some Werewolf by Night, huh? Adam, thank you for the 17 months. Welcome back. So ideally we grab priority here so I can yondu them again next turn before they Phoenix Force. Lubrication, thank you for the 14 months. Welcome back. Because we we yondued their uh We yondued their what's it called there, their human torch. Talking on Discord, the highest collection level there currently is around 98,000. Yep. Chad, I want you to remember those numbers next time you hear someone suggest Marvel Snap would make more money selling lower price bundles. Thank you for the 10 months. Welcome back. My extra wallet arrived. Hope you enjoy it.
This is a fun stat because we don't know if the game is going to be four turns or six. I'm doing well, Matthew. Life is good. Be slightly better if the patch was going to land on time, but it is what it is. Sometimes stuff happens. We have a new timeline for the patch when it's ready and not a moment before. I want a reality stone somewhere. <clears throat> I'm not sure that I do. None of the cards in my deck are super useful to draw. Location change mode on Nico right away. That sucks. Unlucky. I think we're dead. I can shag here, but I don't think this wind's over here, yeah? They have a four-powered eco. And a collector with some stats too. It's only 12, 18, I'm only going to 15 here. Oh, and they space stoned, yeah. Zero percent. Escape.
All of the comments complaining about the patch delay is one of the many reasons why Second Dinner doesn't communicate firm timelines like that in advance, usually. You'll 100% see less states given as a result of the complaining around, uh, around this. Oh my god, that's insane. Oh. Holy gamers. Oh, here or here? Here or here? Hey, it's here. An eclipse happens, chat, and then a day, not even a day later, the Marvel snap patch is delayed. It's a conspiracy. Coincidence? Get fucked, Buttercup. Does 17 ever win the middle? <sighs> it's a real card their deck this deck could be playing that beats 17 in the middle. I don't I don't think they have one. Victory. I think it's like Doc Ock? Nah, Elias out of their output range. Doc Ock could be though. I probably don't have room for Doc with the Sentry package, though. That would be my expectation.
Any hope for USH? USH is probably like a C plus B minus card. It's above. It's an above rate two drop. I don't think it's gonna make waves in the meta game or it'd be a must have card. But it's probably playable. Chat, I despise locations that put cards in my hand. Please get rid of all of them. Love of God. Snap. Sorry, JK, this, this one specifically is allowed to stay. This one, this one is fine. It gets a pass, okay? Woo, won that coin flip. Thank you. a nicer opponent with a nicer deck. Freaking purple parts, Jet. Don't be greedy. I'll take a pseudo beer, probably also a bounce deck. have good stats. The very loud complaining about the mill decks being unfun and unfair is not power level based in reality. Give me eight next turn.
Let's see my stats a lot sooner. There's some worlds where this wins the game. I'm gonna limp into it. We lose the breaker, unfortunately. Roku, thanks for the quarter of a year of support on the YouTube side. tie if we block the void. Yeah, baby! Maybe I'm supposed to play to Sentry being the last card in their deck and put the demon on the right. And I have to go back and count it. Games like that one really let you appreciate and understand the people who understand what makes Doc Doc good and what doesn't. Because People that aren't particularly good at Marvel staff, the only thing they could focus on in the moment like that is, oh, Doc Ock got played and got Shig Chi, and they can't fully appreciate or comprehend the amount of disruptive value he generated. And it's like, well, in a perfect world, he doesn't get shanged. But also, like, that's fine that he did. That wasn't his his stat line isn't the reason you're playing him in most of your games. It's a takeaway sequencing decisions from your opponents. A 5-0 Doc Ock that wastes their shag and other cards often solid. Yep. And do, you, do you win every game where Doc Ock gets shagged? No, of course not. But do you win plenty of them? Also assuredly, yes. Doc's always had, uh, always had 10 points. I'm excited to get punished in a similar way to they're getting punished here by playing this on the right, but I think it's the line. U.S. Agent being a second copy of Arbor for your Doc Ock and Shang-Chi is something I, I want to explore this afternoon. We're going to start with Spectrum. Uh, that'll probably be the second thing we try. A lot of bangers in our deck here.
the end of that, right? This. This doesn't pick the hood back up is the problem. Because I get a demon and then I get these others. don't have a way to play the hood. I'm unlucky. Retreating later is a mistake. There's no way they're leaving, and I, uh, it's gonna take them forever to figure out their turn. Undo and turn a retreat now, you cannot. Escaped. Like one card too many in our hand there that we couldn't maneuver the left side location. Our werewolf being our literal last card also didn't help too much either. Yeah, getting Stogard off of uh, Zemo also is less than Stellar. Grab a little bit of info here from Thanos Enjoyer. Like a Loki gamer. Should probably play something with Mobius in it. Been a lot of Loki gamers. How do the metrics look on Thanos? Uh, they're middling. They definitely finally, uh, finally hit him in a meaningful way. Agent might have a home and lock, and I would be surprised if that's a deck that wants that effect. It's... Mobius stuff anyways, could we play a pixie deck? Maybe.
The way they're spread out makes me think they're gonna get rid of the Nexus. <sighs> How many points do I have? This is eight, 13, 15. I'm only going to 21 and they're at a virtual 14 here. I also think there's a chance that we lose the Nexus with, are we with the Nexus lose the game? Eliath is possible. I think with Zemo and Elsa, it's very unlikely they're playing Eliath. I could have something like Dr. Octopus out of our deck though. Yeah, I'd have given up one more. I don't think I can. Yeah, I don't I don't think I can stay for stay for three. Escaped. Let me tread in water with this. Like it's time to swap over to something else. I probably don't want to play the Angela Destroy deck if they're people are playing Loki. Yeah, Mobius decks that I've been enjoying. So, so fucking slow, chat. So slow. Yeah. Havoc's not a bad shout with, uh, with Mobius. Going on, Hedge. Thanks for the 17 months. Welcome back. She helped to start me. That is a second if she all feels bad. Going on, monk. Thanks for the 12 months. Gets your sword to go with that shield. Welcome back. Afternoon. I would wager this is more important for them than us. I'm gonna enchantress the cats. Some kind of anti bounce deck. Oh yeah, we played Jimmy earlier. Yeah. Some Teridia. Some Teridia on the on the right is not great for us. to the party for sure. Ah, he stops like at least. All systems go.
They never replayed the hood, right? It's a shame we don't have Luke Cage. They did? No? Oh, it's on our side. Yeah, I might write my brain's bed. Uh, I can't beat Demon and Century. I needed Luke Cage so we could Shadow King the left and have it not be symmetrical. Oh, I could just have to go because I can't beat Century on the left. She Hulk mid Lizard, right? I guess. Sure, we'll live for one against Jimmy again. Can't fucking talk me into it. That's frustrating. It's extra frustrating that Luke Cage is in the bottom three cards of my deck. I just put him in a fucking trash can. They're gonna dock ock us this turn. Which I'm not sure we can beat. Still have Shang as a follow up. Typhoid saves She-Hulk from Shang. Sure, if they Shang that turn, but there's two more turns. And they have plenty of cards to deploy stats to the board with.
Why didn't Zero hit Enchantress? Because Enchantress wasn't played from hand. It was pulled into play by Dr. Octopus. Those are functionally different things in Marvel Stat. loop cage I wanted for Christmas. Gamers, our ad break for this hour is the most powerful advertising money could buy. We are going to check out the Abigail trailer for this upcoming movie coming out later this year. Good at pretending to be a little girl. Thank you. Quick question Who's inside a cage right now? I don't think what it's do a little girl, Jen. How do we kill it? Crucifixes. Stake through the heart. Daylight is a big one. We need to find a way out of here. We split up. We split up. <laughs> do, they, do they actually say that in these movies, chat? We we split up. <laughs> this is just a game to her. What can I say? I like playing with my son. <laughs> Hello. Theaters, April 19th chat. Hey, that's my anniversary. Ten days from today. And I've got a short list of the old talking points here for people that want to learn more about Abigail. A group of would-be criminals kidnap the 12-year-old ballerina daughter of a powerful underworld figure. And all they have to do to collect the $50 million ransom is watch the girl overnight. In an isolated mansion, the captors start to dwindle one by one and they discover to their mounting horror that they're locked inside with no little girl. From Radio Silence, the directing team of Matt Bettelini Uplin and Tyler Gillett, behind the terrifi terrifying modern horror hits Ready or Not and 2022's Scream comes a brash, bloodthirsty new version of the vampire flick. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Check that out using the link above the chat. And, uh, you know, don't get caught. Don't get caught by the vampire. Well, Civil War is another one we did a bit for. All right, and apparently this trailer needs to go for another minute, so I'm going to play this one more time. Cut the shit. You're really good at pretending to be a little girl. Thank you. Quick question. Who's inside a cage right now? What do 
we know about vampires? Yeah, the eyebrow is there. How do we kill it? Crucifixes. Stake through the heart. Daylight is a big one. It doesn't look like any of the crucial vampire things were gonna We split up. Line of the page is children can be such monsters. Puppy was wrong. <laughs> Hello. Splitting up is a Twitch chat move. That is that is accurate. All right. What are we getting? What are we getting torched with next on the ladder? What next? Discard Thanos. Can't say that I expect to play much Thanos anytime soon. Splitting up in a horror movie is big. Twitch chat is a competitive advantage energy. <laughs> That's such a great way to put it. I don't think my deck could ever beat Hella unless the spider ham pork sell us, so. One time dealer? Unlucky. That is a quality, quality uh, spider hand period. I was gonna leave zero percent of matchup like this. Thankfully, on the ladder in the polarized matchup, we can just bounce for one. I got to infinite rank 500 with Agatha Hella from rank 80. I mean, only losing 420 ranks while playing Agatha is impressive. Play a little bit longer, you could probably go lower. I think US Agent will have any impact on the metagame at all. I mean, we don't really have a super defined metagame at the moment. But no, I don't really expect it to be an overtly powerful card. Uh, this was a person playing the mill deck earlier. And they got a free Hotel Inferno! Freaking rigged. Thanks for the 10 months, Luca. Did second ever say why the patch is delayed? They never do. Uh, 
Uh, Red Guardian will be a real card that Metadex probably want to play. Queue up with deck that's zero percent into Hella. Queue into Hella. Two out of three games. Sounds about, sounds about right. I enjoy playing have a serviceable hella matchup. Yeah, I'll just eat shit and die. for like sunspot moon girl here would be ideal that was pretty good Delayed is in release some other day. Oh, snap. I think I'm doing this, even though the only useful thing it copies is She Hulk, and then next turn I could go Sunspot Jeff Goose. Sunspot double goose. Uh, maybe. Maybe. Fire for takeoff. I don't know. It's easier to play for the center if I if I don't put a card in the super flow. My she hulks are completely free now. Thanks for the 64 months, Matt. Welcome back. Beat 22 in the middle. Killmonger. Killmonger. Victory. It was nice of them to give us our Titania back after they took her from us. Bud.
Players missing to Tanya and Gurb. Literally impossible. Yeah. To be fair, Chad, if you see Titania, her curves are pretty irresistible. Unfortunate. Unlucky. Wait, Saber Tooth? It's not what I was expecting. Tatiya's lore that explains her texting game. I would assume Tatiya is a bottom-up design as opposed to a top-down, meaning they probably had a card design that they liked and they went and sought out a character that she could kind of work for, as opposed to starting with the character and then designing something around it. Play to the center, yeah, I suppose. A priority. I don't know, they could just be handing us a big card, though, is the problem. I mean, is destroying Goose when I'm handing them my stuff weird? And they could be handing me big cards? Do we think that's weird? Oh, they're handing me their saber shoes, so thanks, I guess. They were, in fact, a killbogger deck the whole time. All right, sure. Victory. Maybe they didn't realize Mindscape was there? Uh, I was in a weird spot. 90 minutes till US Agent Gibbers. 95, 94. card, yeah. It's 
like a copy of Hood next turn. So the question is, would I rather copy Titania or would I rather copy another card with Moon Girl? I think I'm copying Titania is fine, yeah. I need to play the Carnage out, so I copy the She-Hulk next turn. So, death! This is a little good thing to be aware of. The death being discarded here is, generally speaking, indicative of our opponent playing a Hella variation. about to juice this up. I wanna soak up some sun. Gonna tell everyone to do, 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 do. Our last turn's pretty sick here. We get to go She-Hulk, She-Hulk, Juggernaut to Tanya. Which could realistically be to Hella here. Discarded. Fuck's sake. <laughs> uh, eating shit. <sighs> Escape. I think it's funny that people cite Shang-Chi as being a necessary evil for Marvel Snap so big things don't run rampant when the decidedly do big things best deck doesn't give two flying fucks about Shang-Chi. I think in reality, Shang-Chi simply strangleholds which big thing decks get to be played. Just the AFK Journey. AFK Journey has been my most played off stream game for the last week. It's really good. We're going to be doing some sponsored segments for them on Thursday and Friday this week. I'll have a code on Thursday. I put Hood over here, so that way, if we spike Carnage, we can eat the right. That one's that one's old, Juki. Interesting and fun and quality, quality gameplay. I think about what makes good TCG gameplay, and I think, yeah, I want to play against Tella. 
for six of my last eight matches. We should go hide in Conquest. The ladder's been kind of not great. I think Loki and Hela have been a good chunk of everything we've played against today. with Psylocke or something new? Waiting with painted breath. Psylocke into Tempo Maximus. It's just too clunky, it doesn't work. So the 14 months, King J. I guess we can start at these. Welcome back, Zilly. Good afternoon. Let's go snap these on one. Honestly, there's 15 of them, and I don't think I'm playing Infinite Conquest this season. I just want to burn through them. Is this really 
I don't want to be emoted today. Evergreen, evergreen statement. Today. <laughs> King all, thank you for the five months. Welcome back. Oh, the warhead plus the ice box means I can't Annihilus and Mockingbird next turn now. And. Some of the time. Jason, thanks for the twelve months. guild that I started is currently full. We did a uh, sponsor segment for them week before last when they first came out and we filled up. It's been here in a while. It probably just playing like a uh, mess of cards that they probably enjoy. Definitely not a deck for lack of a better term. I just hit the purple dust bottle deck as well. I feel you. Thanks. Which makes Mockingbird free. And then next turn, I do these two. Yes, that's good.
Do I want to guarantee Mockingbird goes left? Probably. Although I suppose uh, they're fully locked, yeah? So we're good? You get nothing! You lose. Good day, sir. Victory! for the center would be nice. So that's awkward. So now Wakanda can end up somewhere else. The center. anything new I feel like playing with the I don't really feel like cooking anything with US agent coming up in the patch of the horizon so just kind of recycling some old favorites today They could plus 20 in the middle. I can't beat that, but I can beat them left and right, yeah? this Zero Sentry Demon, more points. I couldn't play Sentry on the right. It can only be played on the center or left. saying I could have put nine on the right and then ten on the left. Sure. Just one more. Let's 
See how that one little extra added bit of articulation helps me understand the point you're trying to make? How does zero Mysterio work? Uh, I think if you zero the real one, it actually gets rid of it. If I recall correctly. Turn three, Mr. Negative. Something like that. Might be wrong to play Mysterio out. Well, Wind paid my hand. I think this is actually fine, question mark. I, I think this is fine. No, wait, she could not play the Annihilus. In my brain, she was gonna play the Annihilus. The worst part is I don't even get to show them why we got fucked. No longer fight. I was expecting her to play Annie, but we lost the one in three there. And she could have played Annie, but she didn't. And could have, but chose not to is. We need an Agatha emote. There is an Agatha emote. Sandworm, 64 and 7 months. Welcome back. We get Zabu Sentry and then eat the voids. It's not a bad idea. That's fine. We'll read your idea, Carnage. Uh, untapped is the next trigger. Debris left while also carnaging over here. Oh no! Unlucky.
Is this breaker? It's close, yeah. Victory thing. Acted as a 311 there. All right, gamers, have some adverts. We'll be back with our next round of Gold Conquest when you return. Thanks for hanging out. Don't go anywhere. I see some folks talking about a ruling out of Arizona. I was only half ignoring you, Kyle. Uh, how angry, I, I assume I'm gonna be angry if I look at it. Do I wanna look at it? Open the politics channel real quick and get mad. Court rules to uphold the state's 1864 near total abortion ban. Do they do enjoy going backwards, those Republicans? Ugh. It predates Arizona being a state. adverts to finish before I say this I say this next part Jeff <sighs> I'm sure we're gonna lose some followers or viewers or whatever as the the election cycle ramps up and we encourage people to vote and vote for the not fascists but I think it's really important to understand that like all of these abortion bans and other ways to restrict bodily autonomy in the United States, it's not the end goal for conservatives in my country. There are a number of conservative talking heads that are going after contraception and birth control and other things like that. And their end goal is 100% controlling what you are allowed to do with your own body. It is not about being pro-life. It is 100% about control. And you need to you need to understand that being apathetic and not voting is like voting for the status quo. And it's it's yeah. It, I, the idea that it can't get worse is definitely not true. If you actually care about stopping abortion, your goal should be to create a society in which people are able to live where they don't feel like that is their only choice. And you do that by supporting families and women and mothers, making sure kids have the ability to eat, making sure that uh, making sure that early childhood education is funded. You don't, you don't do it through outright bans. You gotta actually, actually fucking help people. And then to, to throw a, a shout out to the people that live in other other developed countries that don't understand why I talk about childcare in the United States. My three-year-old attends full-time daycare so my wife and I can work. It costs my family 
about $17,000 per year for our three-year-old to attend full-time daycare. And the place where I live in the United States, $17,000 is less than people pay for full-time childcare in major cities like Chicago and other places like that. Over 20,000 a year here in New York. Yep. Yep. And then to show just just the the opposite of it while simultaneously forcing birth on a number of uh, women and child bearers in the United States and lots of different states we uh we also have Republicans across my country uh, rejecting and saying no and cutting support for federal nutrition assistance for kids. Not, not only are they forcing more children into the world, they're also cutting support and taking away support for the ones that exist. It's decidedly not pro-life and it is all about control. Friendly neighborhood Spider-Man here. Please grab the void. Unlucky. Shout out to the almost 2,000 reasonable people who hug out for our short, important minute talking about shit that sucks that could be better if enough people care. And an extra fuck off to the 200 some odd people that decided to leave while we talked about it. I'm sure you will make whatever chat you decide to go to instead significantly worse. Not the Annihilus I wanted for Christmas, gamers. I think we're dead. I think we're dead. Opponents? Have no. definitely leave it when they move for us. Space Throne was not a kind location for us. Escape. Magnars, thank you for the gifted subs. Appreciate the support. Dimension chat. All my homies hate Dream Dimension. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot that's gonna go into the Dobbs decision like that. I mean, why why would a doctor want to go work in a state where they could be held criminally liable for providing medical care for their patients? Parker! Nicholson, thank you for the over three years. Welcome back. We were talking a little bit about Arizona. Um huh. It's here, and we're gonna go like Century Mary Andy. Friendly neighborhood Spider Man here. Hey, Matt, thank you for the 11 months. Uh... Dream Dimension is just so much worse for us than them. I'm gonna leave again. Escaped. Saucy, thank you for the 17 months. Welcome back.
Someday, someday my kids are gonna be old enough to learn about these the, these set of years in a history textbook. And I feel like they're gonna rightfully look to me and the other adults around this ask them like, how the fuck did all that happen? That is gonna be one of those like, shrug and I tried moments. I did, I did what little I individually could. But man, it's, it's a lot. Squirrels! Oh, snap. Bold of you to assume there'll be history books. <laughs> Silk's gonna go around the world here. She didn't enter the White Hot Room, that's good for us. I vibe on this for now since I'm gonna have the extra energy. Definitely a lot of how bad could one Trump term be? Three Supreme Court justices later, we're still finding out the answer to that question. After being in your chat, it feels pathetic how little some other streamers attempt to curate their space in a positive way. Well, you see, if you tell the fascists to leave, they'll leave. <laughs> uh, I probably don't need these over here, honestly, if we're going to send Shree the Void over there. Wind. I want to compete on the left. I think so. It's close though, because they're like a vision deck. Friendly neighborhood Spider Man here. Jeff and Nightcrawler could jump here, but then that commits them to the big house if they fill it. I do still have a demon. It's a pretty solid endgame for us here, right? Should have snapped earlier. Now it's now it's a boomer snap. <laughs> I, I meant to snap before my guard slipped up. You thinking about staying? They're thinking about staying. Well, they've, they've been really conservative with their retreats so far. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. I, I wish I would have snapped at the appropriate tab. I think we would have gotten four cubes out of them. Victory. 
Yeah, I pro honestly, I probably should have snapped the fist tower. and my hand is fine, so definitely a snap here. They have Red Hulk in their deck? I guess, I guess our deck's really good at using its energy every turn. itself when it gets bigger. Is it this? I think it's this. And then next turn I can Century Zabu to use all my energy. Or sorry, Century Demon to use all my energy. Oh, shoot. I forgot they had enough. Forgot they had enough to do that. Shag or not. Yeah, lucky. I think we die either way, yeah. God, I got him by a little bit. I I forgot to keep track of their extra energy. I shouldn't have played so hard for here. Needed Mockingbird stats over here. Honestly, the fact that they're a Shang deck, I probably should have played Sentry Middle and saved Mockingbird for the left, just because Mockingbird ducks Shang. Red Hulk's a really fucked up card. Chikagoya, which sucks. Thing saves monster from Shang. No, monster is a six drop. No, 
no, you shouldn't play US Agent to purely help you dodge Shang on the last turn chat. Stop it, get some help. This just loses to Red Hulk left, yeah. I don't really have any decks that I love at the moment, yo yo. The Bass decks are fine, but they just feel really bad to play into Hella. There's not a lot of any one given thing, but there's a lot of there's a lot of really polarized matchups in the current matchup tables. It feels like, which I think makes it extra hard to feel like you're which makes it extra hard for things to be super enjoyable like there's a there's a lot of stuff but like everything has like a 90 percent matchup somewhere it feels like struggling a little bit personally locations the head cards you have I sleep so often yeah I really wish they would they would tune them down some more into Annie now, right? They could rug pull us. Yeah, that's true. Or I could rug pull them. Yeah. add more points to here they can't yeah we don't have record
Nothing can move. Oh, they're just leaving. Victory. Yeah, yeah, that was a good set. I think if the previous opponent's deck ends up being one of the better decks in the game, that's generally speaking a good spot for Steph to be in. It's not doing anything particularly obnoxious. The only really big number it does is Red Hulk. Yeah, yeah, exactly, Batted. All right, add some adverts, then we'll see if we can close out an infinity ticket here, huh? About 40 minutes till our new card releases. To watch on the YouTube side, tap the like button. Appreciate people that are hanging out there. Sergeant Pepper hands. Thank you for the two and a half years for the tier three. Welcome back. They've been all right. And the games where we don't get hella have been pretty good. Oh well, yeah, I had to stop playing the ladder because there's just way too much hello. No slot. Thanks for the entire year. Uh, Big Green, if you want to give away a code, if you want to just like throw it randomly in chat, let 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 them fight over it first come first serve. Some of the YouTubers were quite scathing of US Agent. I mean, I think US Agent's probably a playable card. It's just, you know, it's not gonna like redefine the metagame. Joseph, thank you for the 16 months. Oh, Magnars, if you caught a timeout, it drops the sword. I can fix that. Dusty McRusty, thank you for the 22 months. Welcome back. I think he's fine. I think, I think the Spectrum ongoing deck really wants like one to two more good ongoing one or two drops. So it's probably going to be in, in there. Yeah, it'll, if I expect I will probably play an all right amount of US Agent on this channel because it's a fine card for the small ball decks I enjoy playing. I just, I just wish that if they thought it needed a push, they would have made its ability minus four as opposed to making it a, a two, three. So it worked with both Cerebro two and Bast better. Small ball. The small ball bass decks would have loved a new card. Super two would have loved a new card. Strong opener here for us. I personally don't find Cerebro decks interesting. I think it's really weird to classify Cerebro decks as the same kind of deck because the different numbers of Cerebro decks tend to play out very differently from each other. Oh, I'm gonna make them pay one more cube if they want to see the stereo. Yeah. Yeah, like how Cerebro 2 is a fun deck and Cerebro 3 is a miserable boil. <laughs> that, that's funny right there. What a sweet location for us. So I get to go Luke Cage this turn and then next turn I get to go Hood, Mockingbird, and Carnage all in one fell swoop. Fuck this guy in particular, chat.
got him! I got him, gamers. Ooh, baby. Ooh, baby. What a close game. It's been a minute since we played this deck. This deck's really solid. Christina's art is so good. Opponent snapped. The second candidate for US agent. No? Zabu into Typhoid Mary on Krakoa sounds great, yeah? Some racks across here. Oh, my God, and they can't shake us on the left. Fuck Buttercup. Holy, oh, what is this day? Is this like Dino plus Snow Guard? It's gotta be Dino Snow Guard, yeah? Typhoid. Opponent snapped. This deck's such a delight. Someone asked me earlier what my favorite deck is. This is the answer now. This is, this is the answer now. 
Clearly, clearly we need to spit man we need to split man thing and uh and annihilist for gold so they can fit in. Breaker here? No, the real Mysterio flips up and they get it. Wait, is it a full tie? <laughs> it's a full tie. <laughs> that card sleeve old or new? This is the Betty Arcade Paxi's promo card back. It's good to know that they have Rogue. We'll need to play around that on our loot cage moving forward. Will it be available for mortals? I uh, you could I mean you could purchase it. We have no information on when exactly the patch is coming. When I when I know, you'll know, chat. There will be a stream title and a command. Assuredly.
Boris, thank you for the, the 10 months. <laughs> their, their draw off of our deck was significantly better than ours. Thank, thankfully, we still have four more shots to beat them here. They spewed two. Two four keepers to start, so. Gonna pull it up in the long run, I wager. Uh, I think we bought boosters for two splits on Mockingbird, question mark. We definitely bought some amount of boosters. I don't remember how many. Man, Carnage was so perfect this draw. It's a shame he went away. talked about this at length when it comes to talking about Shang-Chi before, but just to reiterate, there are so many locations in Marvel Snap where even if you're building your deck in a way that it largely blanks Shang-Chi, you're still just going to get shanged in those decks a significant portion of the time simply because of location variance. Yes, and that's why Shang's in 40 plus percent of X. A zero of a conduction. He can't duck Shang while also playing around Mobius. cards out so they can't debris me. Are they carnaging somewhere? Playing Infinite Conquest this season. We'll rack up tickets to say we have them and to acquire medals, but last season playing Infinite Conquest really killed my desire to play Snap, so I don't think I'm gonna do that this year.
if zero splits on this card, 476 boosters, that's not enough. I think Human Man Thing were the only golds I was missing in this Bakke Clutterium. 428 on him, also not enough. They said the speed up for claiming your stuff is supposed to be coming in this upcoming patch, so fingers crossed. Let's move it, move it for 20 minutes before uh, our new card comes out, huh? No time to grind out more kind quests. We can do it on the ladder for a spell. people complain Cerebro is unplayable because of location variants when this archetype suffers way more from location variants than Cerebro does. Infinitely more so. I actually don't think I would use a collect all button on the on the track. I don't want to collect all my reserves. I want to keep like 20 to 30 of my reserves so that way when new 700 gold variants drop, I can get them right away. Third location in a row that's bad for our move deck. That tracks. Could be worse. Could be worse. Escaped. You see the movie Don't Look Up, I have. Quality flick. The Angela revision gives me hope that maybe, maybe I'll live to see like a three one or three two werewolf by night. Would be, would be lovely. Actually, uh, Verifer Venti. I think it, their comment here is that they think they should tag certain locations in specific ways 
and make it so those locations can't all show up together in high densities. I actually think that would be a, a good slash sweet implementation. Snap. Was a Kodal? Thank you for the forty-five months. Such is my judgment. My judgments. Oh my god, Red Hulk versus White Hot Room. Unlucky. playing really hard in two lanes, especially when only getting plus six per move trigger. And there's about a human torch who might have been okay. If you haven't seen this deck before, this is one of the many sweet decks you're missing by not being subscribed to my YouTube channels. A lot of great deck highlights up there several times per week. Just dead, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, if we'd have... If this had been a human torch, it would have been what? One, two, three, four, two to the four. What's two to the four? It's actually not that much. It's only 16, huh? That's not really not bad enough. It actually ends up being bigger. Yeah, Heimdall doesn't, doesn't draw either because of his tower. Edge. Escape. Do one more of these, and we'll load up some US Agent decks while we run some adverts. So. Card release in 12 minutes. Ooh, piece of candy. Count wrong. Yeah, maybe a human torch would have been slightly bigger. I don't know that it would have been enough there, though. Half half. Yeah, we need a, we need a falcon or a beast next turn. Beast would be ideal. But magic makes sense in this deck. I think there are other decks that leverage turn seven better than this deck would some of some amount of the time. So probably not. Is it not better to play Kitty on two and then Angela Kitty on three? It depends on the rest of your curve. It's less energy efficient. It really kind of depends.
There's a world where this Doctor Strange is game winning. We pull the Human Torch right and then we Heimdall the left. The question will be is these two plus this and this enough to win the left? Ooh, and then playing hard for the right against my Heimdall, that gets good for us. I may have blast this deck. This deck is a lot of the things that are good about Marvel Snap. Uh... Listen, chat, you haven't really played Bounce if you haven't Bastard your demons before, okay? That's all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm gonna say. If you haven't Bastard, Bastard your, your one drops when you didn't mean to, you're not even really playing the deck. All right, we'll end this deck on that chuckle. Have some adverts, not subs. I'm gonna put together some US Agent decks. Card releases in nine minutes, don't go anywhere. Actually, subs, so before we do that, I'm gonna run to the bathroom for BRB. Tried Shuri Kitty. Yeah, we played Shuri Kitty this morning and it seemed kind of shit. this we played pixie in it that felt kind of okay see that being good Sub Goose. I just don't have a lot of great hits. And la the last card is USHA, so I'm not if it's something else that have to cut something. I don't think I want to. Two bows.
to the 50 months, Viking. Welcome back. What else are we doing with you, SHG? That's the one that immediately jumps out to me. We just like building other small ball decks. Pepper Jack, thank you for the three quarters of a year. Welcome back. Now I'm pretty sure Streamer at three is terrible. could play surfer i think trying to play man things probably a mistake because i'll bet people will be trying to play luke cage alongside their own u.s agent which makes man thing much worse yeah we could do the the goose storm core boosters to you. Split this eventually. Lady Deathstrike is definitely not a card I'm playing. Abomination's just too hard to make work. You just don't control how many things your opponent has that are penalized. Just build build the bass deck, I suppose. Just put it into this kind of core. This could very easily be Goose US Agent. Is there is there a different shell playing this core that plays different cards on that last one? I don't know that you need to play Luke Cage with your with your what's it called your US agent just because you could just like not play your big cards into his line. Yeah, there could be a mocking bird. I already have I already have a havoc build chat. We can, we'll throw it in here and see how it feels. We probably one, two, two, two is probably enough to start. King one, thank you for the seven buds. Welcome back. Yeah, so 
not bad. Oh, they're rotating Token Tuesdays again. I thought they just changed it, but they're rotating it again. Interesting. I'm sure Reddit will be happy about that one. You might rotate. It's not the same every week. There's different gold amounts and token amounts that you get for the gold. So this week is 700 gold for 500 tokens. Last week was 1,500 gold for 1,200 tokens. Like, why haven't my spotlights updated? I don't know that I've been to this US agent yet. What are my what are my other variant options? There are no other options. Well, fuck me, I guess. Got me, Brood. All right, give me 20 minutes to open my spotlight caches, and then we'll uh, we'll start playing. Only 20 minutes feeling optimistic. I was gonna open for the spotlight variant, but it feels like maybe that would be irresponsible because it'll add 30 minutes to the opening. Lance, thank you for the third of the year. Welcome back. Do I like this, Jeff? I might like this, Jeff. The other one I have is adorable. Avatar is definitely good. It's good. I was down to my last 70,000 collector's tokens. We can stock back up. situation you said we just looked the spotlight variant is literally the only variant why are you opening caches for agents instead of getting it with tokens why should i get it with tokens instead of using caches just doesn't matter for me, Jet. Sure. 
two, two reasonable auto decks in a row, chat? That's illegal. Opening caches is bugged. How is opening caches bugged? I see people talking about having issues. What's the bug? Quiet. Does it work better? Uh, does it work on uh, PC? People are saying PC too. Well, sometimes lucky that I guess. I'm excited to see what type of compensation we get for this one. Spotlight, spotlight keys are a, a big resource to oopsie chip. to personally deliver my $10. Verdict's <laughs> not a great Krakoa deck. Maybe we can spike Lizard off the top. I know it's early, but I can tell this is a bad card, so I got him in one key, and that only happens with bad cards. <laughs> Ooh. There's a man who's been hurt. subscription I appreciate that welcome back it's been quite some time spores are good thanks for hanging out for five months Shadow King for the left to give their Cerebro bonus everywhere, so I think we're dead.
Whenever we have a rollover after there was supposed to be a patch that got delayed, it always seems to have some type of disasters with it. Duct tape is coming apart at the seams, gamers. I feel like the only possible solution for people that spent keys during this is that they refund the keys people spent, right? Maybe there's gonna be a lot of US agent because people are gonna pull for him because he's bugged. Doing. Someone, someone do up the Stewie meme where he's like, where's my keys, bro? Where's my keys? What's the bug? There isn't a clear answer how exactly things are bugged. They just look to be bugged. Pixie doing pixie things here. Avengers Assemble 2? Opponent snapped. But see, how is he also assembling the Avengers shit? I need a I need a lore nerd stat. Someone someone explain to me how many Avengers did they did that that was Captain America's voice as well, right? Dead. No, no! We're dead, Chip. Actually, close. They needed the killmonger. He's a government appointed Captain America replacement. Okay. The Eclipse Fried Second Dinner Sir. That's why there's no patch yet. and three bigs.
Oh look, I'm playing against Loki, so this is a 2-3. I feel like new location being out early is just like the norm. the same for every player, yes. Smell free key compensation, which makes me want to open caches. I mean, you're into gambling. And let's be honest, you're playing Marvel Snap, so you're probably into gambling. they just reused I can't believe they just reused his voice assets that's actually hilarious Thanks for the two months. Welcome back. Thanks, there'll be any sort of compensation for people who didn't get US Agent 4 keys. Yes. My guess is maybe today's patch has the voice line in it. Yeah, that could be it. They had a placeholder in there in the meantime. We'll see, I suppose.
joke! Look at chat! Our US agent did the thing! He had... He was a 2-3! With ongoing! Cool! All right, we managed to dodge drawing Spectrum, so hopefully we get a cheap copy of her in the deck. Okay, Spectrum does not have her six cost back. That's lovely. I'm just playing these on curve. I think I'm just playing these on curve. He, he's a he's a 1-3, I suppose. Can they How big are they gonna get here? They're gonna get plus five up to 13. They need 12 more. Yeah, yeah this is probably fine. Oh, they're sure Blizzard though. Forgot about that. Oh, but they played for the center. US US agents here, Chet. He's got our back. US agents. Look at that. Look at that! Two three. Victory. Crushing nerds and taking names. USA! USA! Two, three, ongoing has ongoing. <laughs>
Yo, dog, I heard you like goose. So we goosed your goose. Otherwise, I believe. Uh, the fourth spotlight cash can never be anything other than tokens. If your collection complete, asterisk. Oh, you got a Groot variant. <laughs> yeah, it's bug. It's bug. Except, except today. Will you be copped? I hope so. There'll be a lot of angry gamers. advice or suggestions or recommendations on optimal ways to game the fact that spotlight caches are currently bugged for people game game at your own risks gamers Twitch won't let me pin a message with the F word in it. Fuck you, Twitch. <laughs> I was gonna... <laughs> Wait, did it go? All right, maybe my thing was just bugged. Patch delayed, spotlights bug, US agent fucking terrible. It's been a day for Marvel's staff. Thank you, half half. All right, cool. So, someone else just, it must've just been my, um, must have been specifically my client. I couldn't pin my own message earlier. Maybe it's just like, oh yeah, maybe. This card is actually useless against the most popular deck in the game currently.
Okay, this is actually kind of hilarious. Apparently, Twitter updated their app to replace the text twitter.com with x.com. Only they're not doing it where that's the only part of the text. So they're replacing like netflix.com with nextlytwitter.com when clicked. <laughs> this, this is like freshman in college programming mistakes type stuff. This is what, this is what happens when you let an absolute fucking idiot drive, drive your program chat. You know how, you know how, uh, gamers always think they could run the video game better than the company that makes the video game? Elon Musk with Twitter is exactly that, only he's someone who also had enough money to prove that he couldn't run it better. US agent? Pour one out for our 2-3 boy. Oh no, he was gonna shrink Miles, chat. Unlucky. Unlucky, he was gonna shrink Miles. Can they play? How big's their kitty pride? Do I need to blue marvel or are they gonna play for here? Do I play for left or do I play for right? Yeah, I think they don't play for deep space. I don't know, it's close though. Oh yeah, Magento in the middle could get us. Of that location. I'm just snapping on one to snap on one shit. I don't really care. I just used nine or ten keys. Good golly. Don't worry, chat. Our US agent is gonna make their 619 three points smaller. It's gonna be fucking great. He's so powerful. Pixie giving me a six energy spectra back is, uh, is a peak Marvel Snap experience. Oh, Lucas. 
Funky boy! Yes! Yes! USA! 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 We got him, Chet! We fucking got him! Look at that! Look at that car! Look at him shrunk down! Played right into our trap! <laughs> Look at this! Look at this small card! No, actually, I think we won, right? Because we're adding 13 on the right, and we're adding 8 in the middle, and the Red Hulk's only 16. Oh, yeah. We're actually beating the second... We're actually beating the second Red Hulk. And you all thought... You all laughed at me. I'm excited to lose to them having Silk and Red Hulk. That would be bad for us. Let me out of the second line. Here's your two screenshot review of US Agent. <laughs> oh man. That one, that one's going in the highlight chat. Let's play a few more, but... Whew. Deck swap? What on God's green earth makes you think the rest of our deck is the problem? Have some adverts. How is the rest of our deck remotely relevant? I have some adverts on the YouTube side as well. him with Hobgoblin. I don't like... That's just like bad Selene, right? And like Selene's not even good. Right? I really like this uh, Abomination. That's gonna be a new favorite. Yeah, I don't understand why he couldn't have been a tutu that uh, gave Midas four. Would that uh, would that really have been too much?
He makes your Valk lose three power. He's symmetrical. So playing him with Valk is not good, no. Radar, thank you for the 14 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Zad, thank you for the three quarters of a year. Welcome back. deck both of both of which uh us agent doesn't have text boxes too okay okay he's gonna he's gonna have text here chat i can i can feel it wait i just goosed my us agent lane oops that's fine i, I want to keep them off of monocking Unlucky, unlucky, but it is what it is. Not Loki. With Nick Fury, they might actually be Loki discard. Energy ongoing card chat, lovely. Agent man thing combo lane. What game of what card game have you been playing that that sounds like something that's powerful enough to be competitive? They are the Loki discard deck, by the way. competitive oh well in that case what do you think about playing uatu with us agent do you think that could be good if we pair him with uatu
If the point of your suggestion isn't like to like, it, do I you think this could be competitive? It's like, what are why are we asking about it? What about U.S. agent strip mine and force of will? Asking the real questions. Kata. Honestly, the US agent probably not being relevant to this deck is if there's a deck where this card's going to have a home, I think it probably needs to be one with more controlling effects like Storm and Goose, or it probably needs to be one that wants to play him on the last turn of the game. So maybe we'll, we'll shift to one of those after this. But this, he's definitely just been a 2-3 ongoing here. U.S. agent would be good with Luris. He does cost less than three. Yeah, not that Sarah controls necessarily a good deck, but that could be a place to try and shove him as a 2-6, yeah. Mother of God. Holy. Question is, can they beat 20 and 12? They might be able to, we'll see. Behold, um, my mighty hand. Behold my mighty hand! Hulk was only 11 power, unplayable. Yeah, basically. 
Is it a crime to want Howard for this deck? No, Howard's a lovely duck jet. Should we try Sarah control with US agent? That's probably his least bad home. He's like a second Maximus in Sarah control, he said. Coping as hard as he possibly could. stats on untapped. What if we we shove US agent into it? Trying to get rid of my ghost chat. Wow.
And then next turn I play all of these and we win the game? No, wait, hold on, hold on. He gets, he gets more here in the middle, yeah? More, more! I'm gonna do this, final answer? Final answer. Testing environment can shirt out Red Hulk and US Agent. Like, I don't. I don't know how those same cards come from the same team in two different weeks, back to back. remotely similar in power level. I don't know that I think I expect them to be intentionally releasing bad cards. I think, I think, I think they think this is playable. I don't know. I don't I don't think it's malice related shit. Oh my god, is it actually just another Sandman deck? Actually true. Buffing Angela made US agent worse. That is factual. different creators that feature in Sandman recently. I don't think you can attribute that to just one of them. Order, sure. Deck, yeah. So I'm, I'm just gonna leave because I'm not playing against Sandman. 
Who deserves greater compensation? Those of us who didn't get US agent or those who did? <laughs> Asking the real questions. Second hitter. Second hitter's just trying to save you from yourself. So oh, gal, thanks for the third of the year. Welcome back. Who had hype for US agent? I want I want fucking names, Tim! Who had hype for US agent? First, last name, home address, final four of their social. Oh, this is fine. The Ebony Blade costs four, so U.S. Agent can shrink that at least. Avengers, Freaking got him. that said it's probably the best card to release this season. You, uh, you probably shouldn't take card balance advice from that one anymore. Oh, this is fine, chat. We'll just Enchantress the Ebony Blame. So that way our ongoings work. Did something happen to the audio? No, the silence is me contemplating my life choices that led me to this point.
There he is. There he is, gamers. The man, the myth, the legend. The three drop. <laughs> I believe, chat, we're going to win the left. We're going to win the left, gamers. This is fine. Nobody panic, says local man about to be a lieth. Everything is fine. Nobody panic. Maybe I should have not played the goose and moved Jeff over to here to grab priority. It's one less point of power, but it means I wouldn't have gotten a lion. I am Iron Man. Did we do it? Did we do it? Avengers! Assemble! Sure didn't. Sure didn't. And you. And that's just like, you know, he tried his darndest, but it's Marvel Snap. And and this is, I, I was going to try and not talk about Shang-Chi as much, but it's just so core to so much of what's going on in Marvel Snap right now. Part of the reason why Shang-Chi is everywhere is the same reason why a card like U.S. Agent isn't good. Which is to say, Marvel Snap isn't about a game most of the time where you have a bunch of smaller numbers that add up to something meaningful. Marvel Snap in its current state is about really big fucking swings. Huge. You need, you need your swings to be big enough to fit on a giant's playground chat. You need you need your four drop to be able to generate 40 points of power. That's why Shang is great. Oh wait, one more turn on best. Ultra greed. tomorrow is it gonna be great i am currently debating just not having a highlight for the new card tomorrow yeah, i think i might just just skip another day of video on the edited channel i don't know that i can realistically put something together that i'd feel good recommend recommending
All right, gamers. Assuredly, this is the one. This is the game where US Agents text box is really good. I, I believe in him and he in me. This is 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 only over here. If he wins this game, he gets a highlight chat. He's fighting for his life here today with all of us. And he win his lane. Oh, yeah, puppy! Fart on me, daddy. I think US Agent managed to win his lane. He did. He did manage to win his lane. Oh no, chat! If I would have put the demon on the left like I did originally, we would have won the game. Oh no. Oh no. Unlucky. He won a lane. He won a lane. We would have lost the tiebreaker. No, I would have been plus three on the left. I would have won the left outright. There wouldn't have been a tiebreaker. How big is the US agent buff in the impending patch? You can tell us. <laughs> Wind aid my hand. Chat, I know what some of you at home are thinking right now. Man, the opponent has a 613, a 615. How is Jeff ever going to possibly keep up? Worry not, for the US agent is here to deliver us from terrifying six energy cards. Don't you, don't, don't you even for a minute Worry your pretty little heads. We're in, we're in good hands with the U.S. agent yet. Apologies, I was doing a bit and forgot to click the button. Reality Stone casually giving my opponents Hope Summers my copy of Kitty Pride. Thanks, video game. Thanks, video game.
Assemble! Freaking got him, chat! Take a screenshot, ship it. Crushed, dominated, brutalized. Blob, you say? Well, thanks to the mighty U.S. agent, you shall only be a 615! Ha-ha! Winner! Victory. And they said, they said the U.S. agent couldn't get it done, gamers. They said there wouldn't be a YouTube highlight in the morning. We'll highlight that. Hello, YouTube! Actually, one by three. Nailed it. USA! USA! What a, what a lovely, what a lovely Marvel set card. Membership on the YouTube side. Appreciate the support. Snap. Honestly, it's kind of borderline unfair what this deck is doing. Expecting other people to have a chance to keep up with Marvel Stamps Premier cards like U.S. Agent and, um, Havoc. It's just not, it's just not a fair fight, gamers. The problem here is they're a Shang deck and we're not... Wait a minute! US agent lets us duck Shang on the left, on the right, chat! Holy! We have the technology! Shitty armor! I choose you! Hodokin! USA! USA! Got him! Ooh. 
Ooh, piece of candy. tokens for shitty armor. for them. Do this so they can't play their bigger movers into here. Well, rewarded in a way for waiting on the Mysterio, I suppose. Might be losing this, but I also just want to get on to another match, so I'm going to ship it. It's not U.S. agent need to retreat, you yeah. know?
Slow Movers is still an Alliance deck. They swap is still Alliance. Some of them are playing Alliance. Some of them are playing Red Hulk. Some of them are playing both. All right, chat. Have some adverts. You could have a mute, motherfucker. Literally don't care. We'll see you in 120 seconds for some more of this. Thanks for it out. Don't go anywhere. Yeah, I think this deck is... This deck was fine before they we added US Agent to it. This is one of the highlights on my secondary channel relatively recently. I don't know that US Agent fixes anything. U.S. Colossus is creative, he is. He's playing a 31 power Red Hulk, well, that's an extreme example. I don't even know, like, people are saying U.S. Agent should have been Series 4. Like, sure. I guess more people would get a bad card if it's series four. But like ultimately it doesn't change much, right? It's been good content this afternoon. We've been having, we had a fun stride here at the end of for sure. We had a couple of games that are funny. Hopefully we can get a couple more and we'll throw a video out tomorrow. Honestly, our deck's so cheap, I probably should have, uh, we did a turn to best. Spotlight keys did not change. They are just bugged at the moment. I don't think our deck ever beats a copy of Dr. Octopus. Red Hulk in hand. Got my Nico said. All right, and the last card in my deck here is Kitty Pride.
on the on the center, obviously. And on the right, because they have a 627. Don't you don't you worry, gamers! I had a US agent. Approaching the moment where we make a meme deck lead into that for US agent. No, we're approaching the moment where I sign off because I need to take my kids to an extracurricular activity. So we're gonna play with this for another 25 minutes and pray to God we get two more highlightable games to link to the editor in the morning. Looking too terrible. You double kitty Angela. Uh, they're probably some kind of scar deck if I had to venture a guess. Darkhawk, I guess. Thank you for the 14 months. Welcome back. All right, this beats Red Hulk, yeah. This beats Red Hulk. for the third of a year, Osiner. Welcome back. I'm adding 9, 13 on the left. I'm adding 8 in the middle. So if they just play Hulk, we lose to Hulk and we win the others. Uh, 
Uh, I said we're adding 13 on the left, right? So if that's true, we beat them by one. Yeah. Got him. deck's gonna be capable of winning games chat like i said this bad this little havoc fast deck is one that i've been a fan of for a little bit and us agent is a fine fit in here it might even be playable in here but set a to set a low bar this deck is constructed in a way that he makes sense. Uh, the last time we played this deck, I had Rogue and Shang-Chi in the US Agent and Goose slots. I basically substituted it so we were a little bit more proactive disruptive in this build. All right, the odds that this deck can beat Hella seem like zero, so we'll do our best, I suppose. We'll try. gonna put a bunch of US agent targets into play. That she is. That she, that she is. I believe, I believe, I believe! Good. Minions to me. We only lost because US Agent was in our bottom three.
solid, solid cat god here. Six plus three. Give me a ten pointer. Ugh, I can't believe they nerfed US Agent to be a three cost already. Starlet Citadel is such a terrible combination of locations for us. Avengers! over the last year and more, I'm sure. I appreciate that. Our trickle-down economy in action to reduce the cost of that next shillionaire. Draw's actually not terrible here. Pretty well set up. Our next shillionaire will not only need to spend 999,848 shillings. Coin flip gamers. is this? Unlucky. We actually would have won the game if I'd have played the D-Man. It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> oh, man. <sighs> this is know which side I wanted to commit it to. Breaking news. It's actually just all hella matchups. Actually just all hella.
I don't believe we've had any communication officially from Second Dinner on the key issue. Did you rather play against Thanos or Hollow? Thanos, not close. Old Thanos overpowered you quite frequently, but at least you were playing an actual game of Marvel Snap. Too, that I think I don't think I've heard enough people talk about is that Darkhawk getting nerfed is one of the reasons why we saw Hella move towards prominence because the natural predator to that archetype is the deck that simply doesn't let them execute their game plan. I want to draw cards here. Which was dark which is Darkhawk. And since they nerfed Darkhawk, there really isn't a great predator for Hella. The deck just like comes together, does its thing, or you retreat. Uh Hella has basically always had reasonable stats. It was the best deck for a little while, and then they nerfed Lockjaw, and then post Lockjaw nerf it's still been fine. Why does Darkhawk counter Hella? Because Darkhawk is the only strategy that prevents Hella from actually doing what she wants to do. Instead of this, I should have put Jeff the Baby Land Shark here. That's what I should have done. His abilities come up so little. I took him up and I was like, wait, why is it... Uh Confused. Like, why is Captain Marvel smaller? <laughs> The Professor X Captain Marvel combo deck here from the opponent. this game remember that turn I said I should have played Jeff instead of US agent if I would have played Jeff instead of US agent that turn I think we win this I'd have been able to play center we should have put like Bast here and put Jeff here so. right they're 19 power Red Hulk bested by 6 power US agent fucking weird weird Three quarters of a year spell free. Welcome back. 
Why is there been so much outcry for Red Hulk being big like Blob? I mean, I'm not complaining about it here, but there's a lot of content creators that have been calling for that card to be nerfed. Also, like, 19 power Red Hulk is still a far cry away from, like, how big Blob was on release. Significantly smaller than Blob was on release. Copy of Storm, which I assume is going to help them here. Unlucky. Getting their Miss Marvel's not bad for us, though. The love of God, video game, please stop generating cards for my hand, Christ. gonna be funny. Holy. Tribunal? You're you're right, they must be tribunal, yeah? Is what this is. This is, this is it, Chet. This is, this is his moment, okay? He's trained, he's trained for this. His, enti his entire career is coming down to this moment right here, right now. His whole life. This is what, this is what Second Dinner designed him for. Right here, right now. But for when they super scroll and you get him twice. <laughs> get, the, get the camera, mom! No! No, it's the Proving Grounds opponent! Come back! I wanted my fucking clip! Oh my god. Fill in. And they just closed the app. What a, what a wonderful use of time.
three more years for the menus all to load here. Maybe this was their final straw because they've done nothing but play against US Agent Dex. Yep. Donation, would it take for you to open your entire collection track on stream? Ah, uh, probably would take me in the realm of two or more hours to do it. So, a lot, <laughs> a lot. Let's say a lot. Stretch goal for a charity. It just wouldn't even be good content. I think it's really silly when creators like do something that's that's that, do like do creators do something for charity streams. It's like not only is it like tedious, but it's just like who wants to watch that? It's not it's not content people want to watch. Why, it's why when I do charity stream goals, I do things like costumes that can be silly and fun while we do stuff that people actually want to see. Both have a bunch of energy. Underestimating how many people watch CSGO, turn up to watch CSGO cases be open. To think that that is remotely comparable to me, opening stuff off my collection track is just beyond idiotic. CSGO cases have actual tangible things that are worth real dollar reduce in them for people. It's a very, very different thing than watching me open all worthless things off the collection level track tediously for hours. Limbo here. Get to smack the mockingbird with the US agents. Yeah, yeah, like I don't even get variants out of my track. It's literally just avatars and currency. There's nothing remotely interesting about it. Cool. US agent was 2-6, that was fine. Nailed it. Victory. Right. If they're going to sit here and sweat up, I'm going to go to the next one. U.S. agent's performance so far, I think Beast needs a nerf. <laughs> it's just so 
strange, right? Like, I think you could release Agent with like minus four or minus five, and it's like still probably not a nuts card, but it's maybe serviceable. Snap. Happily married, at least I used to be. Oof, can we pour it out for our opponent chip? a lot that's a that's pretty heavy to put on the on the internet game Opponent snapped. Wait to play the Jeff till after I bishop, so I'm gonna have limited space. Oh, that's actually interesting. Do I do I like Storm Mysterio next turn now? I think we play for every location pretty cleanly here. I think I do this. They also storm a rickety bridge. <laughs> Get fucked, Buttercup. Someone must have posted. This is our second time playing against the Movers deck with Professor X. Someone must have posted that. Smells, smells like a content creator to me, gamers. Phenomenal assessment from Trilogy there in the chat. That's an accurate description of, I think, where, why U.S. Agent seems like he kind of struggles. U.S. Agent has a stat line where if he impacts even one card, he's above rate and seems good. The problem is, in order to get that, he needs to be played in the later turns and thus generally doesn't provide the impact you would expect out of a turn five or turn six play. I think that's an incredibly articulate summary of the card. Which is why I think if you're going to play it, it needs to be in something like this where you can like force them into your US agent path with stuff like Storm and Goose. But I think that's that's the crux of like the problem with a card like this is when you when it's a two drop and you play it on curve, your opponent can just play around it. And if it's not a two drop you're playing on curve, it um it has the problem of not keeping up with the other bigger plays you expect on those later turns to get minimal value out of it. If you play Agent on Curve, he's less restrictive goose. Yeah, basically, Cockles. All right, folks. I gotta take the kiddos over to ice skating class this evening, so I'm gonna go ahead and bounce out. You definitely should not buy US Agent, even if you are able to and your spotlight caches aren't bugged, unless you're a massive whale. If you have to ask, should I buy US Agent, the abs answer is absolutely fucking not. We still don't have any update on when the patch is coming. Hopefully, we'll get news on that soon. I'll post in the subs discord and on Twitter if we get news about that while I'm offline. I'm planning to do a nice full stream again tomorrow. We'll kick off uh, sometime after 8 a.m. Central. We'll stream through about 3 in the afternoon. Appreciate everybody that hung out through the end today. I'm going to go ahead and find someone to raid here on the Twitch side for folks that want to hang out there. And as always, I'd encourage you to check out my YouTube stuff on, uh, on those pages places there. You're looking for more from me today. About a second since we've raided teams. Let's go ahead and send you over their way. Our great Marvel staff content creator and you. 